Hello and welcome to yet another offline catch up. Oh boy, how exciting. Hooray. Today we'll be doing the very first ever Hassan stream. <laughs> Woo! Oh, wow, when was that? When when did we do that? I don't even exactly remember. It was when we had Adam and Sitch on as well. Uh they 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 joined us for a little look into his first ever reaction to the knowledge that Jay had uh not been happy with his reaction. His, gosh, remember those days ten years ago? Yeah. If you listen to Hassan, he's More changed so much. Yeah, he's gotten so much better. Yeah, he's learned from all of his mistakes and has grown as a person. I will say that from then till now, like I think his reputation has dropped with a lot of people. It has. It absolutely has. Thanks for sure. Had a lot more dumb shit. It's been mm -hmm. pretty funny. I know always nice to catch up Hungarians updates. in his audience aren't very thrilled with him. Mm. Oh, I don't well. know what the deal was there. One one person <laughs> who was Hungarian didn't like something he said, and then he just goes full, like, insane on, throat. on all Hungarians, yeah. Well, uh, I can't imagine what was said here, but, uh, you know, we discussed all kinds of things, so... Yeah. Well, let's see. This one says... Kang gave us one chance at free will, and Wonder Woman used that chance to struggle cuddle a guy, so he was like, no more free will for you. I mean, Man, because Loki would have come out, like, when we were doing, just when we were doing this coverage, didn't it? I was gonna say, that doesn't even work as like a, you know, like, oh, he did it because he saw that humans fucked up three times. It's like, he's making us fuck up. According to, like, well, he's making it happen, <laughs> that's right. Well, some of the biggest fuck ups ever are his fault from what we can gather. Mm hmm. Well, I don't know if I trust that guy leading us anyway. Um. Someone just says emotions are dumb. I don't know about that. I kind of like him. I like him. Um, it's definitely worthwhile to keep him in check, but I mean, worthless. Jeez. Things would be a lot more boring if there were no emotions, but um. They would. And they're often I have indicative. no strong feelings one way or the other. Do you want to be like the neutral people? Maybe you do, actually. <laughs> Maybe you do. Yeah, they they lead you to what what is actually happening for realsies sometimes, and they tell you a lot about yourself. You know, good old emotion. Mhm. Mm I'll never understand why long critiques would be bad. Someone got upset that my One Piece Robin video was thirty four minutes. That's child's play. Um. <laughs> well, honestly, now it, it, what's funny is yeah, like. Certainly now, and probably a bit then, uh, Long Critique is getting a lot more uh, accepted now. Especially because it's algorithmically thing. friendly, and that wouldn't be algorithmically friendly if people weren't friendly to it. Exactly. It's, um, people want to watch stuff for longer. I think we're definitely, I mean, of course, there's the market for short stuff, like on TikTok and everything, but it seems, it almost makes sense as a natural progression for YouTube then to almost lean into longer form content. Yeah. Um, less less long hate these days, which is nice. That's nice. Um, evening, gents. The first thing I heard when I turned into tuned into this episode was "rape is subjective." Oh. Hopefully, we were very clear. Yeah. Opposed to that sign, of course. Uh, I can't understand how anyone can find Britain hot. The low last night here was 90 degrees or 32 degrees Celsius. Today the high is only going to be 103 or 40 degrees Celsius. Wetter weather around here. Oh, I've, I've been over before. I've got some weird biology going on where I am I way prefer the cold to everyone that I know. I'm like Mr. Freeze. So I get hot <laughs> way easier, but I also like have no problem in the cold. I don't know what happened to me. I got a weird mutation or something. Um, you didn't know about the best channel on YouTube, Jinx Reload? Like that, I still remember when that was happening. I couldn't believe they were fucking they were doing what they were doing. I was like, how is this fair? How is this something that's allowed to get away with? Yeah. And to an extent, why the fuck are you guys watching this person? You know. Well, what are you getting out of it? Yeah. It's just like, well. It, it's proto Twitch viewers. They're just lazy. <laughs> they don't know what else to do. Someone else will curate the. Co That's uh, I don't. I don't get it. Yep. And then you so have Denims all those years later, say like defending the concept of being a curator. It's just like shut up. 
YouTube can curate for you. Alternatively, you can curate for you. Just anything but this, please. Yeah. Uh, Rax misspoke a while back. He didn't say he ruined grandma. He said he ruined grandma. That's why there's so much bad grammar out there. Also, hi, Rax. Hi there. Oh. Who you have knows to save what yourself, I've been up Rags. to? Ruining grandma? Oh, wow. That's a pretty good bomb there. Uh, re react to 3 a.m. channels next, please. 3 a.m. channels? I have no idea what that is. I don't know what those are. Are those sleeping channels? Channels that sleep? Maybe. Can you watch them sleep? Um, maybe 3 a.m.? You got nothing for that one. Uh... Do not. This so is like, do not order Chuck E. Cheese pizza at 3 a.m. Do not order a Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Happy Meal from McDonald's at 3 a.m. Top 5 scary videos you should not watch at 3 a.m. It took my eyes, the Sandman ritual at 3 a.m. Okay. Uh, cutting open Haunted Encanto doll at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't know what all this is. The few good reaction channels do what y'all do on EFAP movies. Either have a lot to say or only show the bits where they actually react to something. Seems like the ethical way to do it. So the Dark Viper guy, who's uh, came out hard against it at the same time Jay did with, with San, um, Yeah. saw his video on it recently, or at least one of them. And his opening, he even mentions like a summary, and he includes Jay, and says that Jay is way softer on this than he is. He goes on to say like, he's like very strict with how he expects you to do a reaction, to the point where I think uh, we wouldn't count as ethical in his system. On oh, why even us? God day, like, damn. You can't wow. in full? Yeah, I think his main issue would be that we end up playing videos in full. Um, That's... Right, oh, well, so I, I do that for him. That I, match for I him. do not respect that perspective. That. He might even. So, this is the part that was interesting to me because I was thinking about it. I think he said, like, he was very much pushing the whole, um, if yours counts as a substitute for the original, then you've, you know, stolen its value, sort of thing. And to an extent, I think that could. We could satisfy that. Like, um, would you rather watch a high top video on blah, blah, blah? Or would you rather watch our coverage of high top? And someone could be like, I guess well. Once you reach that point, it could just be that any negative piece of criticism that would prevent somebody from watching, you know what I mean? Like it's well, like even if even if yeah, essentially. even if they said, um, you know what? I didn't even think uh, the video he made was that bad. I agree with the criticism they gave, but uh, there was some stuff in there that I thought was okay. And then they'd be like, oh, you, you watched it? And they go, no. I mean, well, I saw everything through their coverage, so I wonder mm -hmm. if um, if that fact alone would make him be like, yeah, you guys are fucking up. Uh, yeah, maybe, but I mean, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'd I just, appeal um, to the utility of being able to criticize something in its totality. Well, and this is the thing, I, I think I would just go as far as saying, like, oh, maybe, maybe it doesn't um, satisfy the law, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you can do that to my work, and feel I should be able to do it to yours. I think it's ethical, basically. I think that there's a lot of utility to being able to I don't know that I want to be in a landscape where you can't go through something in its totality. It feels like that just encourages clipping little parts. Exactly, like that, that's kind of um, the fundamental for why we do it the way that we do it is that we never cut, you know we didn't cut anything out, you saw everything that was on offer. You saw everything, yeah. There's no, no claim of like context omitted because the full context is available for everybody to see. Uh, to play devil's advocate, I see a fair share of reaction channels that pause every now and then and give their insight, but channels like Jinx are the worst. You wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't need a devil's advocate. We are that channel. Again, we do a lot of reacting on, on EFAB. Mm-hmm. can often be very fun. There are other reactors out there who do different things. Um, so, I'm not sure what's going on here. I think I might even paste this to you guys, see if you can make sense of what so we got what another strange is. one? Definitely. Maybe it's it's done in a way that 
It's easy to decode, but I'm, I'm having trouble here. I... I'm not even going to attempt to decipher that one. He's in... He's isn't gladly chopped under the moon. It looks like the last thing they say in the first one is, what's the stream about? Is that what they're saying? Something. Well, I guess they found out. I hope so. Hmm. And then... And then they ask what's... What's the morning about in the second one? What is the morning about? I've always asked myself that question. Never known. I've always just decided to settle for answers, but ultimately I've been waiting for a scholar to tell me. Join us on that quest, I suppose. Um, but alright. Ah, Pokimane. It's... Uh, it's a Gundam's future ex-wife. If my memory serves correctly, her best friend Valkyrie uh, passed her a few months back because of the controversies. I'm pretty sure Pokemon doing fine. I'm sure she's doing fine. Yeah. Didn't she have a thing recently complaining about um, Linus Tech Tips? He actually conceded because he referred to her as a nameless creator and it upset her. Um, oh. Yeah, like... That's an that's a weird sort of, um, controversy. He, he gave, um, some advice on how to do ads in future because the current way they do it is intrusive to viewers' enjoyment of this of the service. And one of the ones that she gave, because I was talking to Jay about this, was, like, they pop up in the corner and they're not, like, they don't do anything audio-wise or something. And, um... But the fundamental premise being, like, they're too intrusive, we need to make them not intrusive. And, and I remember Jay being like, oh, that's, that's not a bad idea. And I was like, yeah, because you're the fucking consumer. That's a bad idea for the advertisements. They want you to be intruded. They want to be. Yeah. Exactly. That's, like, what they're paying for. Why would they pay for something that can be ignored entirely? Like, it seemed like... Kind of defeats the whole point of the ad, really. I, I feel it? like, yeah, you're ultimately just going to have them buying less ad space, because the ad space isn't as effective anymore. Um, yeah. And so Linus Tech Tips, I think, uh, took what she said and uh, said it was dumb. Okay. Um, and, like I said, I think referred to her as nameless, which she specifically pointed out as being very hurtful. That's <laughs> really? Yeah. A lot of things apparently were very hurtful with, with, with his like, statement. Yeah, that's kind of I mean, interesting. Is that not, like, super Freudian? I don't know. <laughs> I, I definitely wouldn't... <laughs> I would look if I was the most popular YouTuber and I saw someone I like kind of liked who was respected yeah. say the you know the Mola I have no fucking clue who this YouTuber is I'd just be like oh okay yeah exactly that's what I mean it's, it's just odd. there's plenty of people that are huge that I've never ever heard of yep of course of course it's just we part of it isn't often it? reference the makeup genre it's like there are hyper popular people there that I've never heard of you just different spheres you know it's just Yep. Different spheres of the internet. We talk about movies and media in general. They talk about how to look good with today's fashion. And now. that is a okay. It's yep. just not. It's, yep. I don't know anything about that space, have that a world. Fun time. I don't know how often plague doctors are applying makeup. Hmm. So, um, yeah. That was funny. And she complained and then he apologized, I think. I like don't Apologize for calling someone nameless. Okay. I think so. I, uh, to be fair. <laughs> oh, I guess she knew that he was referring to her. Well, it was well, her uh, screen right or her video. Yeah, it was her comments. I think it might even have been her tweet that he was looking ah. at or something. Uh, I got you. But I don't know. Maybe he didn't see the the likes and retweets because then he wouldn't have said nameless. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't hugely care. Uh, I just thought it was kind of funny that like. I, I feel like if she had done this during a controversy with It's a Gundam, uh, it wouldn't have gone over as well. But she's got a position back, maybe. Because uh, she got in trouble with Leafy as well, but I don't think that had any lasting effects. While well, he got banned, I think. Oh, right. I'm not up to date on all this internet drama. Yeah, it's sometimes it all just happens and you're like, wait, what happened? Like, exactly. It's all done. Nobody cares anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. In fact, by the time people hear me talking about that, they'll be like, when did that even happen? And it's gonna be like, yeah, it's old news. Nobody cares anymore. Which is especially weird with that news cycle. Yeah. like hours. So rapid, yeah. Um, that an edge is an edge. You only chopped it down because it spoiled his view. What's Reaper moaning about? I know that quote. Hot fuzz. I don't. Um, oh wait, what was the quote? Sorry. It's the it's the meme where the guy is like, blah, 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 and then the police. Oh yeah, like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah, yeah. What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. Yes, I suppose. For that one scene, Danny's like speaking very well compared to how he usually does. Yeah. <laughs> then what was it? What what is uh what is that? C mine! C mine! C mine! Ah, it's just a little junk! <laughs> this <laughs> reminds me of camera the... angles when... Yeah, the zooms. <laughs> do, you, do you see the uh Land of the Lost? I no. did, but I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> Alright. That was Will Ferrell. Wait, yeah, or are you yeah. talking about the original? Because that was a remake. Not, not the original. The original was this fucking horseshit. But I mean, th the the remake, the, the movie, movie okay. I thought was kind of yeah. Uh, thought it was kind of funny. As to my memory, I thought it was funny. But they have a scene in there where there there's a character who just speaks in this gibberish language, and the, then he starts singing like randomly a song. But the song's in pure English, and his voice is absolutely beautiful. So it's like the the joke, right? That's a funny movie, I think. I haven't seen it in ages, though. I wonder if it's actually funny, or if I just had. I'm pretty food. sure it's not. I'm pretty sure it's like really bad and stupid. Oh. Like it's kind of. A, well, the thing is, I I don't remember much about it. I think it's from that era, like kind of like the Jack and Jill, Mr. Bop as Penguins like era, you know, of comedies. You remember that, like in the late late. Uh, 2000s, 2000s, like early 2010s. You mean the, that genre the really height of comedy? Out. I remember. Well, that genre doesn't really exist anymore, you know? Like those types of comedy movies, you notice that? Like they seem to be a lot harder to come by. Um, or maybe it's just because I'm not aware of them anymore. Say, aren't they all on Netflix and we just don't watch them? Well, yeah, because Adam Sandler had to deal with Netflix, didn't they? Where he made a bunch of like those types of movies. And mm. I mean, he was super instrumental in uh man happy gilmore was a good movie <laughs> yeah um i know y'all saw tomorrow war they messed up ar carbines made me cringe they messed up a lot in that movie they messed up like just continuity uh well you guys spend a lot of time on super chat catch-ups and editing here's some money oh thank you we do, yeah. Cracking down now on uh, finishing our back uh, our backlog. Mm -hmm. there. Titanfall 2 for EFAB Gaming. Looking at you, Rags. Titanfall 2? How would we even play that for... I think those uh, servers are lost, aren't they? Basically, to... Um, there's there's like a fan... Thing. There's like a project thing that you could use... Uh, I think like like a mod or something that got put together, mm. but right. uh, there there is a way to do it. Though one thing I will say is uh, right in front, uh, right before we started recording this, I was playing a game with my friends called Sea of Thieves, and it was very yeah. fun. I, I that that is a that is a very good game. I, I really hear that game has improved tremendously from when it came out. Yeah, it is full of stuff to do and it is so charming and wonderful and the graphics are just it's got this gorgeous style to it and it's fun to play with your friends and get on a ship we were on a big old galleon the four of us and we were trimming sails and steering and anchoring and doing all that good stuff navigating it was it's really fun highly highly recommend sea of thieves if you have some friends to play with there you go Rags, I prefer to play both the developer and the publisher equally. Oh, wow. Well. Wait, sorry, could you say that again? Rags, I prefer to blame both the publisher and the developer equally. Oh, I guess this may well be about 
because of time for two came up, I guess we may have talked about. Because that was, um... Because wasn't it Respawn made a lot of decisions with that game that, um, I don't like. Like, Respawn made those decisions, not EA. Like, apparently Respawn launched it in the middle of Call of Duty and Battlefield's release. They don't have an interest in, like, fixing up the servers and reinvesting time into that. Now, since I think at the time or shortly after Apex came out, Titanfall 2 got a bump. But it was kind of just left to wither away. Hmm. Uh, let me check and it. Uh... Really no interest now in, um, in Titanfall 3. It seems like it's Apex in these Star Wars games. Which is lame, because Titanfall 2 is, like, one of my favorite shooters ever. It is one of my favorite shooters. Even that just game. for the single player alone, I would highly recommend everyone play it. Even if it was just the single player, but that multiplayer, I I had so Good. much fun. It's fun. It had a it had almost ten thousand people playing today. Today. Yeah. Okay. Huh. So, that's definitely something. It's almost Maybe as much as changed. <laughs> Halo. I think uh, it's on wow. sale on Steam uh, ah. currently, but yeah, it's got a. It's the highest it's been in a while, looks like. Like, that's a game that I would happily buy into a system for if they had, like, that they'd add a new mech or something every, uh, or a new, like, character class. And just add in new maps. But, yeah. Well, it's Apex, and I don't know, I'm just not as into them Battle Royales. Um... State of Emergency by Rockstar was absolute trash and they did nothing to fix it. Alien Clone Marines was a travesty compared to what was previewed. Hello Games is the exception on fixing things. Oh, I don't, I don't think they're a strict exception anymore, but yes, that reveals what episode this is. I remember this, because that means we were talking to uh, Az about uh, No Man's Sky, weren't we? We were, which, um, yeah. as far as I am aware, is a well-respected video game as it currently stands. Um, they keep adding stuff. Well, uh, I can't do anything but recommend Internet Historian's video. He goes over it in depth, and it's really interesting. Um, because they chose to ignore social media for ages and just work. They just worked, 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 worked. Commendable. Um, I mean, yeah, especially considering... Um, they already got the money. They could have they just was, uh, cut their lock and done something new. What I remember him pointing, he points out loads of things they did, but one of the things was Sean Murray would like collect all data regarding discussion on the game and then collate them into like, or categorize them in, into just all complaints. Ones that were useful, ones that weren't, and then what the most complaints were about regarding the game and that would help order what they would develop first. Cool. It was, it's such a like, this is what I mean, like, it's so hard not to be like, this is such a proactive decision, considering the circumstances. It's one of those ones where it's like, what else can they do? They have done the most they can do. Uh, it was, the whole thing was a fucking unfortunate disaster. Um, I think Az was like, yeah, but they lied. Like, uh, that's not necessarily untrue or anything it's just that there's you can understand just, why uh, they did redemption stories i like, the, I like yeah. more redemption stories the lie was more so fueled by they were sure they could make it in time mm -hmm. well it's because they were an indie studio that was making a game that had a level of hype well beyond the average indie game um that game was hyped like yeah, massively i remember Absolutely. i was really excited for it for a time, then I didn't buy it when it came out, which was the right decision. <laughs> I never cared about it. I was just keeping an eye, and then everyone was, oh, like, yeah, I was the like, "Wow, this ever. looks neat! It's a cool yeah. as fuck premise. You get to just explore like the universe." <laughs> it was you. You go between planets. You fly in and out of atmosphere. You have all these places to explore that are you know generated through you know procedurally and yeah. And, and what they showed off, like all these animals and different kinds of planets and. Foreign fauna, atmospheres, the different composition, beautiful landscapes, like, the promise was there. But, I mean, that was a game probably well beyond the scope of what a team like that could make in the time they had. Yeah. Um, but, hey, but I'm glad that the games get turned what they around. Did. It, is, it has simultaneously become two 
a, both a cautionary tale and at the same time also a redemption story. Yeah. And it is useful for both purposes. Yeah, and it, it highlights to me, um, if that doesn't count as redeeming yourself, what could they have done? What, what could they have done? They, they did a lot of things that they didn't need to do to turn it around. I mean, they already had the money. Um... And to not only continue, not only to put it towards a state that was close to what it should be, but to continually add on to it for free in the years afterward. As I say, you want to, it's not, you want to punish the bad and, yeah, yeah. you want to reward the good. I don't care if it's exactly. who it is. The whole point is you want to encourage good behavior. Yeah. So if a company does something good, oh yeah, well, they're EA. He's like, yeah, I know, but they did something good. So want you want to... Yeah, so you want to reward them for doing good things, and then if they do bad things, you do not give them money. They know where their cash comes from. You want to send a message with your wallet, and yeah. never ever spending money, ever, regardless of anything, that is a different kind of message. Yeah, well, that's, I think we even talked about this. Like, if you, if you make it clear that there is nothing they can do, then why would they do anything? Yeah, they won't bother. They'll just be like, well, we're never going to get your money back. Then we'll just keep doing what we're doing, and yeah, we'll, we'll just, try for we'll new. We'll start people. a new game. Fuck it, and hopefully the new game, like we'll start even a new studio, uh, new name, join different teams, so that you'll forget, you know, who did the bad thing, as opposed to sticking with the name and, and just developing until the game is better. And again, I haven't uh, played the game, so I, I can't even confirm myself. It's just it's all I hear is that it's way better now. Yeah, that's all I've heard, is that it's actually good and fun. It would now. be really interesting to see what would have happened if the current state was what it launched in. Wonder how yeah. it would have We were just talking a moment ago, I brought up Sea of Thieves. When that game came out, it was so lackluster, and there was just wasn't much to it. And it was very disappointing, and it was overhyped, and all that stuff. But now, I highly recommend everyone play it, because it's just so fun. It's played it for hours and hours before the, uh, the our, our catch-up today and i i spent money like i spent money because it's their battle pass is so good they're on season six you don't have fomo because they have a special type of currency whenever something leaves the current whatever it is rotation or whatever it goes into a special store that you can use you accumulate currency for just those things so they're never gone gone um and you get so many rewards for battle pass even if you don't play and you also get really cool stuff if you do. And it, it's just, there's so much work went into it. Like they spent, you know, just the water physics alone in that game are so impressive. Just, it, it, it's a, it, it is a game that I'm happy to spend money in for a thing here and there because I enjoy it and there's so much to do. And I enjoy playing it with my friends. Um, as acting like the cancel culture. He's, uh, he was, he was, I think he made it clear, as far as he's concerned, they crossed a line that they can't come back from because he was lied to. I think we tried to suggest that even if they gave him his money back, because I don't think he ever... That was another thing that got a bit weird. I, 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 uh, he couldn't get a refund, he said. Which I yeah. thought, um, I thought there was, like, unprecedented amounts of refunds for that game because of the nature of the release. I recall something like that. And if he couldn't get one, I wonder if that's less so to do with Hello Games and more so to do with whatever platform he bought it from. It might be. I just, yeah, I just don't know. I think that's what our conclusion was. We just didn't know. Hmm. Uh, they were pretty much forced to release by the agreement with Sony, even if they had wanted to delay. Yeah, this is, this, they were in a really bad position. Uh, and I think they got one delay through at some point, but they, they wanted more and they, they refused. Which is interesting to think about. Um, yeah. Is it like, is it, is it a matter of, um, is it absolutely no way in terms of the business that Sony well, could actually get well the delay? Be, um, the, well, you got to think about a lot of the decisions that these big companies make based on quarters and like fiscal years, financial years. There's a lot of things that are just incentives in terms of release. It's the reason why a lot of stuff comes out in March. Um, it's because like March is the end of the fiscal year for a lot of companies in the United States. And so like trying to get things in and like Q4, it's the reason why Call of Duty always releases like October through December. Never before that, never after that. It's because like hitting certain quarters 
to have your returns for that quarter is really important for shareholders and mm -hmm. just business. So it probably that's probably what happened. They wanted a delay, and it's like, no, we want it out this quarter, and then that was the end of it. Um, because that's just kind of the nature of it. Um, like there there are targets that um, people want to hit uh, or companies want to hit, and um, less of a consideration for like how that time is really important for the overall game. Yeah, but I, I, these conversations just don't happen. It's the reason why I harp on opportunity costs. It's a huge deal, and it's never talked about. Nobody really talks about the business side of the video game industry. Uh, is there a source for them intending to lie, Ari and, uh, and MS? Um, the, the the video goes over it. The idea is he went on loads of talk shows, Sean Murray, and said, the "Game is going to have A, B, C, D, E, F, G." game comes out, it has A and nothing else. Like, damn, dude. So you just lied. You just straight up lied through your teeth. That was never a thing in your game. And to the point where he would say, you know, they'd be like, oh, you've got B, C, D, and E working? And he'd be like, yep. Yep, it's working, and it's in there. Uh, we'd later discover that either their build, you know, was was running and those things were working, except it, it wasn't like a wide release build or it didn't have the other parts of the game attached to it or something. Or it just didn't exist at all, and he was saying that it will exist, and that's that's right. enough to push you forward. You can judge him harshly for that. Um, I can understand judging him harshly for that, though. As the video points out, so I'm assuming it's true. Because I trust internet historian. Um, a B C D E F G is all it's all in there now. So it's like right, historic, yeah. You know, they eventually did make sure that to come through. I'm assuming there's still things not in there that were promised, but we're talking like... I, just, I, I still remember... So there's probably a bunch of stuff in there that was never promised that ended up being in it. I think so, feature. yeah. Um, and like I said, it's just the people who play the game have lots of good things to say about it, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, put this money towards buying a copy of No Man's Sky to annoy ass. <laughs> Look, he's he's entitled to his position. Mm -hmm. Someone tell Hill vs. Babyface that Sony demanded Hello Games release despite them asking for more time. All the new updates have been no spending besides the base game cost. It is a completely different product now than then. That's another thing, man. Not making people have to pay it's extra to get all this stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. They could have. Mm hmm. Could have called it like and you know doing base mechanic they updates. Be anymore, you know, at some stage they would have been able to, and the audience would have been okay with it, and they still did. Probably, yeah. Yeah, because that's the other thing is once the game was uh, getting all these bits and bobs released, they started engaging in social media. Yeah, yeah and because they obviously they can come out of their hole at that point because people would be like, hey, I like a game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not throwing arrows, shooting arrows at them. It's like, oh, the arrows have stopped. A couple of rocks every now and then. We Which, by the way, those. it kind of, it's representative of how to approach a lot of things online. It's just like, just keep your head I down I was sometimes. just about to say that. Our brains are, like, linked psychically. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, yeah, that's the pro-Jared thing. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's special. Just keep your head down, collect all the receipts, and then just dump them once everything's ready. No matter what. I, and you, know, you only win because all the people out there who, like, smugly decided that you were Satan... And then like, oh, shit. It's like, yeah. When they didn't hear your side at all, because you were quiet and just getting evidence. The less fun part of being virtuous online is to find out the actual details. Yeah, it's not nearly as fun when you can't just hear one thing and decide who the evil person is. But, oh well. Guess that's the price you gotta pay for having a little bit of conviction and giving people a fair shake. Well, it's funny because most of the time it does work. You can hear just a casual story say like, oh, that guy sucks, and that's it. That never comes up again. But um, the bigger ones like Pro Jared, it's just, just, just hopefully that voice in the back of your head that's like, wait, what's the source on that? This is loud enough. Hopefully that guy gets through. Uh, faced a lawsuit over their name, had office flooded, had to be out of office continuously due to bomb threats, police investigations, a man oversold a passion project and eventually delivered, stopped being unreasonable. I've, I, with the full story in mind, 
like I said, I, I think they redeemed themselves, and it was incredibly difficult to do so, and they, I think they did it. Well, it, feels, it seems they just went above and beyond. They did more than they needed to. Um, and that's yeah. true, that there I was, um, their office got flooded. They, 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 they faced all kind of weird, horrible Man. shit that destroyed different pieces of progress they had. Oh, Man. Like, god damn. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's a great um, video by Internet Historian, specifically because he puts you on the road of what everyone saw first, the, the outward sort of story that everyone's aware of, and you're on board with that. You're like, yeah, fuck these guys. And then, like, he starts introducing just pieces of information that you probably didn't know about the Rocky production. And then he's, and then he's like, and then, you know, the one ran away into the darkness, presumably with the money, abandoned the offices, that's that's the end of the story or is it you know that sort of thing where you're just like yeah. led along because you're like wait what happens next then i see that's just a good video uh, i think as experience with no man's sky is similar to what i had with fallout 76 so much bad stuff happened in the beginning it can't be redeemed to me Part of the thing, though, is I'm, I'm, I mean, this is just a bias. I'm more sympathetic to an indie developer than, like, Bethesda. Yeah, because Bethesda has all the money, all the people, all the time. Well, and Bethesda is beholden to Bethesda. Um, you know, Bethesda Game Studios is part of Bethesda. Like, it's, it's one and the same. And it's a team of, like, what, a thousand people? Bethesda so large, Game yeah. Studios? It's huge. Um, yeah, I, I'm much more sympathetic to a team of 20 people than a team of 500, um, when it comes to these things. But, I mean, I, I would even still think that, like, there's got to be a path to fixing Fallout 76. I don't think they want to, though. I mean, it doesn't yeah. seem like... I was gonna yeah. say, I'm pretty sure this, that no matter what that game was and how they lied about it, if it ended up being the greatest game of all time, because yeah, they kept adding exactly. to it and it was all free for updates... I I feel like mm -hmm. we would be sitting here saying, I mean, what else can they do? Exactly. If they fixed it and they made it legitimately good, then I'd be like, wow, bravo, you actually did that. Um, mm -hmm. I Obviously mean, with a caveat, it's excusable it's how it came pity. out. But, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> like, wow, I can't believe you made this piece of shit game that, you know, released as it did and was as bad as it was. Like, wow. Maybe that's, that's just the reality of it. It's like, that act was still bullshit. But this act is a good thing, and we just have to recognize that both of those things can be true. Yep. Uh, all of you send as an email to apologize for this. I assume they're talking to chat or whatever, because, uh... <laughs> I ain't apologizing. Oh, well, I think as was a little bit, um, sad at the end of the conversation. Well, not sad, but... <laughs> Angry, despite upset. Despite a bit. But, yeah. He definitely felt he had a very unpopular position to defend, which kudos for sticking to your guns, I suppose, um, under yeah. pressure of having everyone else disagreeing. But like, yeah, I just it just philosophy wise doesn't doesn't gel with me that we can't. Uh, yeah, I can't see it that way myself. Yeah, I get it, but I just don't. I, can't see I totally it. get it. I uh, I just want to. I like my redemption stories. I guess that I'd be curious what his reaction to that internet story and video would be. I'd be curious what he thinks. Studio was flooded. IH's video was very informative. Yeah, all of his videos are. His when recent one. Flooded, it was deliberately flooded. No, I don't think it was deliberate. Oh, just that they had to deal with the flood, but at, but the bomb stuff. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember they had legal issues as well. Um, Indie the development's fact that, hard. The fact they were called Hello Games got them in trouble. Right. With Sony, I think, as well, of all people. Oh, really? Yeah, it was this whole thing. That video is, dare I say, evergreen. Like, I, I can see myself watching it again soon. It's a good one. I should check it out. It sounds like an interesting watch. Um, yeah, first impressions are everything. That's why Zack Snyder's Justice League is horrible, right, as? Um, I imagine he would say, but that's the two different products. Which, to be fair, they kind of are. Um, you know, Zach's vision and Joss's vision. I wouldn't 
basically that's kind of the same thing as someone updating a game. Um, well, yeah, I guess. It's an interesting comparison, though, because that film, the the cut that we got that was the Snyder Cut was not the cut that was originally what he intended. Mm -hmm. It changed because of the... He intended uh, something worse. Like... <laughs> well, I mean, it's much longer than, en than any film that he could have reasonably expected to oh, ever yeah. release in theaters. Uh, the thing is, it would have been made better by it. having to force him to chop down. Um, in this case, yeah, that that film was bloated. Like, considering how much happens in it, that could have been achieved in like two and a half hours, three Definitely. tops. It's like that half not, an hour yeah. of nothing footage in there, and people walking, long tracking That's shots. What I mean by nothing footage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where it's just like, what are we doing? Why are we spending so much time watching this? For the building suspense, idiot. Do you know anything about filmmaking? Uh, I say yes. Well, I imagine you could just build suspense indefinitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's dead. 12 hour long movie. I'm building suspense. Shut up. Like I said, I'm way too cynical for this. I think he just did it to make the film as different as possible, even in runtime. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll add yeah, this. After fucking... all, it's four hours. Think of all that stuff that wasn't in the original version. That's what people were saying. And it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then you watch the film and you're like, you know, it's not that different. Like, it, you, you know, know, a lot of scenes were in the original, they're just longer now. <laughs> yeah. It. Surprisingly similar, but, uh, I don't know, everyone, everyone was certain that the films were dramatically different, and the Snyder Vision is way better. No question. Want to see Entitlement? Look at Super Chat catch-up comments. Oh yeah, the... the Comment sections on a lot of those uploads are like, I can't believe you're, you're, you're making these instead of doing your videos, because doing a three hour <laughs> recording of catching up on people paying you money to send you messages, that means that's that- That's where the real money is. That's where I don't get- this is- that's another thing that I've always found bizarre, is they don't even know the nature of this. Like, I hate to say this, right, because it sounds kind of evil, but wait for the second part. Uh, we've got your money already. It's already done. We're uh, like Hello Games. I don't even think that you could do anything <laughs> legally, because uh, there's no binding process that we have to respond to the messages, I don't think. Um, however, we want to, because we feel morally obligated as well as, uh, you know, questions are yeah, often very interesting. It's fun to uh, try and comply I... with what we consider to be moral obligations and get yelled at for it. Exactly. I left playing a very fun game with good friends, and we were having a great time, and I told them, we've got to do it. we got to catch up on these I super chat. I was more than happy to sleep more, but I was like, no, it's got to be, I can't keep delaying. i gotta, got to get in here. I, I get, get to get play Mario Kart while I do this, so, you know. I wouldn't yeah, I, know I that to... feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very, yeah, just hanging out. So yeah, Answering uh, the know, questions. Just, yeah, being like, ah, oh, you're doing this for money. It's like, no, actually. But the money's already been obtained. Yes. So we have actually your money. no. But at the same time, um, I'm still making videos. So is Fringy, so is Rex. Don't worry about it. You'll yep. be fine. The one part that bothers me is uh, I've not been non-stop doing podcasting for like since I think even 2013 or 14. Like super early on, I started doing weekly podcasts. I told you guys, I had several failed podcasts before EFAP that I hosted. One of them was like, just needed the special sauce. only talking about a particular topic, but one of them was uh, just news in film and gaming, different guests. But yeah, the, they didn't quite work out or I lost the passion for them and uh, they got replaced by, you know, a second podcast or whatever. But just the idea that it's like, you've already recently started up EFAP and it's take it over your channel. I'm just like, you, oh, you're a new viewer. <laughs> I'm like, no offense. Your, EFAP your is nearly four years old. Right? EFAP is nearly four years old. People still claim that it's slowing us all down. And to be fair, it, it, I may very well have released more videos if EFAP didn't exist, but then I also wouldn't have released all of the stuff that EFAP released to with me. Um, well, there'd be a lot of topics and ideas. There's a lot of things that just wouldn't get covered. Like if someone um, said, man, I really would have liked a Boba Fett video, but instead you had to make those shitty minis or something like that, I'd be like, dude, those minis are great. You okay. would but also, like, it would have been that or nothing, probably, because it would have been some other project. I think they achieve what people would probably want from uh, myself, 
for the video, but you also get the insights from everyone else, and you get the fun reactions. But I don't see why, how it would be so easily determined, but that's also true, that it would have taken way longer to make... Um, I, people don't appreciate how long editing time is. Or, I think a lot of people don't, because they don't, they've never done it, so they just don't know. We get that message every once in a while, where it's like, I've started editing, and my god, I didn't realize, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Editing is tough. It's a lot of work that goes into it. It was, um, I, I've told this story before, because it's just one that I remember, it's so funny. In the Discord, really early on, like, year one of EFAP, someone was like, where's TFA part two or three or whatever? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's on the way, it's coming, and they were like, I could have fucking made all the parts by now. It's like, well then do it. You know, yeah. like, if, it, like, I, I don't know, if, because he, he eventually, like, explained he's desperate for there to be a complete series going over how bad the film is in total, and that he could have finished it by now with the same level of quality, and I was just like, then just go do it. Yeah, you have a channel, grow an audience, do the whole shebang, man. You, you, you don't need it. me to do it, because, like, the, the the thing of me doing it is that my style's in there, but if you think it's, like, a, a project that anyone can do and it needs to be done, then that's, that's, like, be inspired, go make it. But at the same time, it's the double whammy of, oh, you, you'll realize quickly how much longer it takes than you realize, um... If you want to try and get and will, a you, will visual. you apologize for being so presumptuous or will you forget that you said that i think they would probably still be sticking to the molly's fault for making it look so easy <laughs> 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 or yeah well that or like i'd still get it out earlier than you eventually do uh that's a pretty funny thing to say it, for as hard as it may be i'd still do it faster but i'm not going to press on and finish this project my point has been proven. You could have done it quicker, <laughs> says I, somebody who can't do it at all. Wait, so does all the projects in between TFA never get counted towards TFA's uh, timeline, you know? No, because, well, wasn't it because you said that they'd come out every week? That was you. That was a mistake, wasn't it, in hindsight? Um, yeah, that, that, cause it, well, that was originally the plan, was to... And to be yeah. fair, I will probably make something that way in future. Um, that's how I made the DS2 series, which was... It was all completed, essentially, except for, I think, the last episode, before I released any of them. I and you see. can do that when you've got a way smaller audience. But, like, you know, if I waited until I finished all of TFA before releasing any of them... Uh, a long time of nothing. Yeah, people would be like, what the fuck? Well... And how interesting would that be, though, if I actually didn't release any of them and I just kept telling you guys, like, yeah, I've got now, like, over 10 hours of unreleased video footage, it's just me going yeah, through TFA. Yeah, there'd, there'd be people who are like, come on, just release it, like, release part one. Yeah, they definitely, definitely would. I would have loads of content creators saying the same thing. It's like, are you crazy? Why would you do that? And I'm just like, well, yeah. Um, so that was the intention, but it will be funny the day I release the final part, that mistake will be irrelevant, <laughs> I guess, to new viewers. To new viewers, they'll be like, "Oh, did he release all of this weekly?" Be like, no. But you still have access to all of them. Really, I look forward to reading the comment section when I release the final part. I can't imagine what all the fucking memes will say. Like, when it took ten years. Which, by the way, I have no idea how long the timeline will actually be by then. But um, other projects pop up, you know. Um, this guy sounds like Tonald and Wolf's love child. Have we tried slowing, it, slowing him yet? I can't remember who we were looking at at that point. Me either. Gosh, Rags keeps bringing up Apex Resident 4. This whole stream. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame. Hi, Wax. No. Yeah. Hi. Well, remember we watched that meme video that was like, how many times did they mention Resident Evil 4 when talking about Resident Evil Village? That and, was uh, impressive. Yeah, it went real video. high, but... Like, I don't know if we need to say it, it's just like, yeah, that's gonna happen. That's what happens when you try to bill this as the spiritual successor to Resident Evil 4, and you mm -hmm. make a shit game instead. That game stank. Oh, you stinky. But Metal isn't funny or good, and yet I watch him. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's glad that you, you check him out. Um, when are you guys gonna EFAP gaming Halo? It'd be so magical because the original Bungie devs EFAP the game stories back in the day. Yeah, they did. Um, that, that's a really fun little, uh, developer commentary. You learn a lot of things about, uh, mainly what was cut from those games. 
little glitches and errors that they point out, like the cinematics that they never got to fix. Hmm. They cut so much out of Halo 2. That game was meant to be like a third bigger, maybe even more than that at some stage. It's amazing because that game was not small. It's not small. That's um, an extensive campaign and it had multiplayer and all that stuff. Do you know what their game right, game. Are, you, are you familiar with what the uh, the original plan was? No. So you remember the big cutscene when she blows up the supercarrier with the bomb? How could I forget? It's one of the best that was, uh, Halo cutscenes in the well, series. That was Maybe that was gonna be famous. a whole that was gonna be a whole level. That was gonna be Covenant Ship. Uh that oh, was gonna wow. have a whole level where you go in and fight in the ship and blow it up from the inside. Oh um, okay. Like you get in a wraith and blow it up from the inside, and then they they couldn't do it, so they turned it into the cutscene. Um, Fair enough. And I, uh, I would have liked it. I'm always down well, for more. After uh, and in in the mission when you're on the uh, it's Delta Halo is the one in that game. I yeah Delta Halo I think. Um, there would after you kill uh, Regret, there was going to be another mission. Um, instead of you just falling in the water and then the grave mine gets you, there was going to be a mission called Forerunner Tank. Where you got to drive around in like a forerunner tank that they had uh, they had intended to have, and so what was what was originally going to happen was um, Chief would be you remember how like Arbiter's going to get the uh, to get the index from the library, um, yeah, like that mission and it's against Keys and and um, and uh, Johnson. It was actually going to be Chief was going to be racing him to get there in the in the tank, so those missions would coalesce and then they would both get captured by the the grave mind when they met there and then they would do the uh and it was originally this is the big thing that they weren't able to finish the game was originally meant to end on earth you were meant to come back to earth and do a big epic mission the ark was on earth oh wow okay um, yeah that's a big difference because halo and, 2 uh, just decides to end on that that baller cliffhanger they ran out of time <laughs> they uh they ran out of time they couldn't do it um, cause the plan was you come back with like Arbiter and, and like this new alliance with the elites that would be like pushed forward into two. And, um, the, you realize that what they were digging for in Halo 3, that is the portal to the Ark, that was going to be the Ark. Um, cause if you remember, they didn't even know, like in Halo 2, the fleet was so small cause they didn't know what they were going to. They didn't realize it was Earth. And then, um, basically, the reason why the Ark was on Earth was because of the big reveal that the, the, the humans and the Forerunners, one and the same, um, you, the, it, like, Arbiter finds that out as the Ark is collapsing after you've defeated Truth, stopped all the rings from firing, and then saved the day, and then that would have been the end. And whatever Halo 3 would have been would have been radically different, obviously. It would have been, that. yeah. And yet, yeah. somehow, even with all the changes, they made it work really well. I think they made it work really well. There's a part of me that really likes the idea of the world where Halo 2 is so fucking epic. Um, but I mean, I really like the trilogy that we got. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. One day Mahler will play them and he will... Uh, play three. He will know. Reach. He, have you only played oh, three okay. in Reach? I thought you would have played the first two. Oh no, I said it. Rags has a better memory than you, apparently. <laughs> like I've said yeah. many times, I haven't played what to do. Right. Uh, one one is really great. That's like a really strong beginning, middle, end campaign. Yeah, Super it's. Aggressive. I really enjoy one. It has that. It's 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 that it's, it's old. Crazy. It's it's that bridge between old shooters and modernist shooters. It really feels yeah. like this is, this is the stepping stone that was used, for how do we get from the old shooters into what we kind of consider modern shooters now. Because everyone's still trying to, you know, it's like a lot of things when they're first starting out. They're they're trying to figure it out. They're they're finding their place. Uh, how do we make it work with yeah, technology and um, things like that? It kind of marries the much more open-ended design of a lot of '90s shooters with something that isn't strictly linear, but um, it, like it's it's definitely more um directed. But, but, I mean, the, the main thing is like if you you look at Halo One, it's like it's kind of no wonder that Halo became it's such a great little like game um there's so many cool ideas like when you land on halo you walk out of the uh the escape pod and you see the ring stretching into the sky in this beautiful landscape it's like that's a really great like that's a great moment in a video game and mm -hmm. then the same with uh the silent cartographer it's like this is a really fantastic engagement going on the beach running up the beach and fighting all of the covenant with your marines by your side and of course the reveal of the flood 
for something that was made in a pretty short amount of time, um, like that, that's a there's so many cool things about that game. The reveal is so good in that game. It's so it's you really so feel good. it. You really feel it. And then of course the big reveal as well that like the the halo is a weapon that will destroy you. What a fucking awesome idea! Halo is a weapon you can use it to kill the flood. Oh no, it kills you. <laughs> that's how you defeat the flood. Damn, it's like you change something from this is a really pivotal thing that will change the course of the war to we can never use this. Mm -hmm. We can't and use this. And the Covenant this. want to, yeah. The Covenant want to use it. Um, it's part of their religion. And it's like, but you don't want to use it. And you need to, but you need to kill the Flood. You can't let him escape. It's like, that is a great predicament to put the characters in. Halo 1 is awesome. That game is so cool. And look what Halo is now. Guys. Oh yeah, so exciting. It's Halo is a show. Love When's it. the last episode out? This week. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Hey. It's gonna be great. It is I going so to look, be amazing. I so to seeing so. what they set up for season two. Uh, oh. Please do an EFAB episode coverage on internet lol cows sometime in the future. Good rap material out there. Also high racks. Hi. I'd rather not. I don't want to turn into a laugh at people channel, really. Yeah, that's just, that's a byproduct of our goal. <laughs> like, yeah. it's not the goal. <laughs> Someone has a really bad take on the media, and it turns out they're just a weird, crazy person with strange things in their room, or they move their hands around a lot, or they, just, the, you know, the little things that you just pick up incidentally. It's not our goal to go and find someone who is lol cow material, but it all is a byproduct of the videos and what we cover in them. Holy hell, Metal. Cat noises when? Can we have them during the Hot Tub DS2 stream? Meow. I guess that's the Metal to decide, yeah. Meow. Pokimane is one of those people who lightens their skin on camera via makeup and in photos via editing. Even her assumed ethnicity is fake. I don't know anything about that. Um, I don't know anything about it. I don't know that, that would, I don't don't know that really you could presume that that's intentional. It would be like that the lighting is bright because a lot of a lot of YouTube channels have like kind of brighter lighting. Uh, the famous Annie Nicholson definitely overexposed oh, herself yeah. on, on, on with the light on well, that was That was like overexposure though, isn't it? Once all the details in the face kind of get lost because it's so bright. Yeah, it's just looking like an android. Well, yeah, but it makes your skin look brighter. Uh, I guess, I guess like it's a balancing act, right? Like, you might want to make the scene bright, but you want to make sure that, like, your features don't get lost in, um, in the bright, bright light. The exposure, yeah. That's, that's the criticism, obviously, and, uh, you can, you can, you got to be careful saying things like that. You could be well, yeah, labeled a sexist say, for the rest of your life. But, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Hassan, you're right for calling out contra points for posting once a month and making eight figures from Patreon. Um, wait, contra point? Don't you make like really detail, like big, well researched, well edited videos with like these big, very um elaborate sets? This is the thing. Contra points makes content, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know that Hassan qualifies sometimes. And Contra gets, points make content, whether or not you like it. He gets way more money. Um, so if we like, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. That not comfortable with just. Then that's a that's an exchange. It's all very voluntary as well in terms of. Um, like you 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 see your work well, you know and then you get to pay if you that. want more of it. Hassan's is more like. I'm baffled that people pay for it. <laughs> like I don't understand. <laughs> Well, especially when I can't see where that money is translating, because at least with ContraPoints, it's like, you know what, you look like you have a channel that has a very healthy Patreon, <laughs> like, in terms of how elaborate these sets are and how good the video quality and editing is. Yeah, and the research, like, um, you can track yeah. um, ContraPoints' success through that. Well, same with Ace Omega, right? I, yeah. Like, his back scenes video, has got this set and all of these, like, really snappy editing. Uh... Didn't Piker refer to whoever shot Dan Crenshaw's eye out as a brave soldier? He did. Uh, did some really weird and fucked up shit, and he's still on Twitch. Because apparently that's how the rules work. Did he even know anything about who Dan Crenshaw, like, was, or what his history was? I don't know that he, he knew anything. He, or he, just that because he was a... Because he's a senator, right? He's like a US, or yeah, like a Republican a congressman. Now. Yeah. And he, he has an iPad, and he was a veteran. So it's like... I don't know, man. Like... <laughs> Uh, jeez. Yeah. 
Uh, seems like the obvious answer here is to make your video then stream yourself watching it to the circumvent demonetization. Um, I guess creators can do that. If they want to. I wonder if that would be in the probably gets you in trouble, wouldn't it? To stream stream your own video. If it was to circumvent demonetization, like if the video got demonetized, you need a live stream and then what, like run ads on it, or I guess through like. Oh, I mean, if YouTube doesn't well, demonetize your stream exactly. as well, yeah. that's their fault. Like, well, whether I guess if they're giving you super chats, it's like, well, that's different, right? People are paying. That's not ads. So, yeah, I figure that actually, yeah, probably makes sense. You could even provide some insights on creation. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I gotta go. I hope you all have a great day. You too. Yeah. Hope your day went well. That was many years ago. Uh, while I don't like video reactions, to me the argument against are sounding like the arguments against Let's Playing. Would you say they are different? Yeah. Um, but the problem is, in a sense, no, in the, in the, we're cool with reacting. Uh, we do that. It's specifically the people who don't do anything. So, like I said, there is an awkward element, as far as I'm concerned, to long plays. Yeah, where it's just the game uploaded in full. Especially highly story-driven story games, because that, to me, we, we've come across this before, but what's the difference between something like that and something like you scan every uh, page of a comic book and you read out all the dialogue and show all the pictures? Well, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about those ones, because they are like a full-on substitute for the original. And you can be like, well, it's presented differently because you've done the commentary over it. It's like, mm, I don't know if that's good enough. Uh... Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you go to the theater and copy a movie with your your thing, your camera or phone or whatever, and then you do some talking over it. I mean, well, uh, I think maybe, I think a, a like maybe. comparison would be if you had a film and you did the dubs for every single line, but it's the whole film. Like you've redubbed every line in your voice, but it's all the same content. It's all it's the film in full with all of the visuals. It's just that you've dubbed it. Like I don't see in any world where that would be good enough. Um, as a yeah, substitute. Definitely. Ripping my my head minefield. Something's wrong mm. with that. Doesn't seem right. Uh striking reaction videos is a slippery slope. In a way you also do reactions. You do better commentary obviously, but you still play entire videos stealing content, potentially taking away views. Well, I, no, absolutely not. I don't think I don't think we've ever advocated really for uh, just going on like striking sprees on anybody you think is being unethical with, with reacting. We would prefer yeah, social course, pressure. More yeah, ways of, of dealing. Convince with it. people to do it better or pressure them that what they're doing is not right. Um, however, if a content creator sees that their video has been freebooted, as Jay calls it, or stolen, uh, I can't say I would take issue with them striking the channel that did it. Well, um, it's a tool that's made available to them. If someone struck us um, for any coverage that we've done, it would be absurd. Like they're, they're not going to be—they're not going to do well in the public arena. Let's call it that. Uh, yeah. When you do the whole, so XQC has—you know—there's a video called blah 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 that's 30 minutes long. XQC's reaction coverage of it in full, unedited, is 31 minutes long. It's like, oh. Um, but you go, what about EFAP? It's like 10-minute video, four hours. It's like, yeah, seems like. Seems like they transformed it. Something's going on here. Something is getting added, and I can guarantee you it. It's not dead air. Yeah, and I think that statistic alone would make people really second guess whether or not they'd want to strike everybody. They'd be like, "Oh, okay, not them." Um, is it Red Letter Media's Mr. Plinkett house set? What the house in Jay's in Jay's video? Oh, I guess His house that. is very small. <laughs> it's basically a room <laughs> with the kitchen. Yeah. Um, and I don't even think those are connected, the the room and the kitchen. I think those are two different places, two little set parts. I think so. If the kitchen is even a set, or if they just use the kitchen that's a part of that building. I do not know. I would suspect that that's the case. They probably just used... They only used I think I've used it a couple times, but it's probably just the kitchen area for that building that they have. And I think they used it at the end of a best of the worst to melt something in an oven. Mm. Uh, so it's probably just what they use it for, yeah. I would wage ya. Wow, is this is like an IRL tour of Ryan's house ass. 
think we're talking about Ryan Kennel. I, I hope he takes better care of his house. My goodness. This was once the home of Movie Bob. Tell me, have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Chipman the Wide? <laughs> <laughs> Darth Chipman the Wide. Nice. Hello, Mooper and Rags. Hello. Hi. Um, I was listening back to old refaps and heard you say Stranger Things Season 2 is bad and I wanted to hear why, if that's okay. It is absolutely okay for you to ask. The only problem is it's been so long now that I can't remember exactly why, so I'd have to rewatch. Excited it. for season four? Um, I had to be talked into watching season three, so I don't think I'm going anywhere near season four. Oh wow! <laughs> that was only because a friend of mine was like, "I still like Stranger Things." He does not like it anymore. Uh, that's right, not even to do with me. Now. He just he thought season three was terrible, which it is. They got two more seasons left, right? There's seasons four and five. Yeah. So the common sentiment, and it's true, is that they never needed to go past season one but for the amount of story they had to tell. The fact we're going to end up with that, six seasons, is that a joke? Or, well, five, I guess. It's, yeah. It's too popular, though. It's like the most popular thing on Netflix when it came out, right? Well, um, unless you're fucking Vince Gilligan, I guess. Don't extend your story unless you're capable of it. Because, mm. um, man, Stranger Things' reputation is going... If this season's bad, too, um... I don't know. Look, I've seen more buzz for this than Westworld, so... Wow, Westworld. Had, when you told yeah, me about Westworld going. the other day, I was like, oh shit, I, I didn't know that show was still going. I just hear <laughs> about it every once in a while, yeah. and it's referenced for the past it had. I never really get... I, I, I thought it was cancelled, or it was ended, or just stopped. I had no idea. Hmm. Um... So... Subreddit HFY had a problem with a YouTube channel taking stories posted there and putting them in a text speech generator monetized and linked to Patreon. Yeah, that's another thing that's like, is that fair? I guess so. I don't know. Someone tells their personal story on a subreddit that relates to the particular problem and then a bunch of other people do. It gets popular as a place where people can share them and then someone takes them all, puts them in a text to speech and can monetize the whole process. Like, what do you think about that? I don't know. These are difficult questions. Hard to tell where the, the labor comes in and where the exploitation comes in. Exactly. Um, but that's happening in all kinds of subreddits where stories are posted and discussions are had. Because there are videos I've seen where people like put heavy effort into editing to have like visuals applied to the stories or there's voice acting that really enhances it. You wouldn't want to like outright ban the process, but if you're doing like the lowest effort version of it and you start making shit tons of money and nothing, none of it goes to anybody who did the writing, it feels, feels wrong. I guess, um, well, so it seems like this would be comparable to doing audio books for other people's books and, and then putting visuals. Over. Yeah, and then profiting where they don't at all. Yeah. Um, right. Like I said, they don't they don't even like they don't even get an initial profit because they're not selling their stories on Reddit. Yeah, they they hmm, yeah. Which is interesting, right? It's like you're like, this is for the world, and then someone packages it and says, No, it's not, they have to pay. <laughs> and you're like, excuse me. Yeah, exactly. Um, they didn't ask permission. Some argued since it was posted to a public website, there's no copyright problem. So, is it wrong to strike well, so, any thoughts? Well, so if I if you post something you've created on a public forum, that doesn't mean people can copy it. You have copyright over anything creative you make as soon as you make it. Like if you draw a stick figure and you post it on Twitter, and someone's like, "Well, you post it on a public forum, so I can use it how I want." It's like, no, that's actually just absolutely doesn't factor into it at all. Um. That, yeah, that, that's not how it works. Like, if I posted my screenplay or something on the internet, you could say that was maybe stupid, because someone would copy it, but, like, doesn't make it any more or less, like, okay. Ethically or, uh, or legally. Mm. The, I guess the problem is that it's, like, what does it mean for a comment to be recognized as, like, a, a piece of literature, you know, in the same way as a published novel? Like, yeah. what does it mean for someone to assert copyright over their comments on YouTube? But the problem is, it's like, well, if someone posted chapters of, like, Dune in comments, it's not like that isn't a breach of copyright. Yeah. 
Nobody's had to answer these questions because these questions need to be answered by courts <laughs> when mm. you have these sorts of conflicts. We are we do not have a good understanding of how to apply the internet to these sorts of questions. Nope. Oh. Uh, um, also, I uh, use the loo real quick. Be right back. Okay. My first super chat. You and the EFAP crew motivated me to start my own channel. Keep up the good work, by the way. I enjoy the super chat catch ups. Good to hear. Glad. Hopefully, in the last year, you've made good progress on uh, on your YouTube. Yeah, whatever it is you're up to. Good stuff. Oh my god, Super Chats? Wow, y'all just want money. Gosh darn, can we at least get some low-effort edited EFAP movies? Also, EFAP movies Prince of Egypt someday? Uh, probably, I don't yeah, know if so. that would be conducive. Do you reckon that'd be conducive to a... Prince of Egypt, why not? Hmm. I guess I'm just wondering with that one. Because right, I, right. do, I do like that movie a lot. I guess I'm not sure how much I'd be saying while I'm watching it, though. Um, I mean, you know, we were six... Like, like it all worked out with like 101 Dalmatians, Mulan, That's, stuff like that. I was thinking about 101 Dalmatians and how it's like, yeah. I think there's always going to be stuff for us all to comment on, be it animation, mm -hmm. storytelling choices, all that stuff. Yeah. What are you guys' thoughts on Robert Downey Jr.'s Sherlock Holmes movies? Sherlock Holmes. Um, I like them. I, I like think them. I think the first one was really good. The second one I was like kind of iffy on, but I I like his Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. I did, yeah. I liked him as Sherlock Holmes. They're making a third one, right? Oh, are they? Yes. Interesting. I, I don't so. know if there's any progress since the last time I looked into that, mm -hmm. though. Uh, but yeah, I really liked the, um, the first one's approach with like a, a villain that was kind of driving him nuts because he'd almost convinced him, essentially, that magic is a thing. He was sure that couldn't be, and then when he cracks it all in the end and explains everything, and in what I thought was quite a satisfying way, a lot of the, uh, the sort of how he did a lot of the quote unquote magic. Definitely a sort of Baskerville's adjacent concept for a story where it turns out in the end it wasn't spectral, it wasn't magic, it wasn't some curse. It was really all there was a solid rational enemy. materialist. For a Sherlock Holmes to have in that. Like, Absolutely. The kind of thing I wanted to happen for Tony. Um, with or, uh, with uh, the Mandarin? Yeah, but even still, you make it legitimately magic. And just make it something that's really fucking difficult for him to deal with, because magic's bullshit. <laughs> to him, I mean. Yeah, but then it was better to make him Trevor Slattery, a meme. And then you just fight orange people. Yeah, and then they, like, regret that decision clearly when they get to Shang-Chi. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, back when they made Iron Man 3, they probably, they probably was some level of like, do whatever the fuck you want. Comics? I don't know. What's in there? Nobody gives a shit about the Mandarin. It's not like he's the arch enemy of Iron Man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Seriously. Unbefucking. What a waste. Iron, Iron Man's even that arch familiar. enemy Iron Man. Like, the character. God I was, damn. I was familiar enough to be excited when I saw the trailer, because I was like, I know enough about the Mandarin and what it means to... Iron Man, that this is gonna be great. And then they had that trailer that everybody got hyped over, and it was a lie. I talked about it before, but like when I was watching it in the cinema, I was like, "We are running out of time to do the story. The what is going on?" Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, oh boy, how did you feel when you saw that scene? Oh, just confusion, then frustration. <laughs> Good old fashioned. Still, people out there to this day being like, "Iron Man 3 is so overhated." It's not. It is. It, if anything, it is underhated. Yeah, I feel like some it people is, don't even know exactly hard. why they take that much issue with it, and they do just cite the Mandarin stuff. It's like, there's a lot more than that. But that's still annoying as fuck. Molly, you're pretty long, but there's one thing the German has you haven't: a great big bushy beard. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, here's some money to take away time from other projects. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> the meme is being lent into that. Uh, what do you guys think of the movie Interstate 16? No, 60, sorry. I have not heard of it. Uh, neither have I. Hmm. 
Interstate 60? Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know about that. No. Yeah, all right then. Uh, who wins between Kang and the It? I guess it, Kang's not that great. Um, well, he's just a guy. I know so little about the It. It's just like a spooky bad thing, kind of. I can't remember that what it, just how makes it works. bad things happen. Exactly. Well, I assume remember, the it wins. I don't know. I assume so because they, I because in A Wrinkle in Time, which is another one of those one out of ten movies that we often that kind of flies under the radar sometimes. <laughs> a Wrinkle in Time. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it, it was it. Is it the first one out of ten we watched? I wonder. Is Could it our? Fr is it the first one out of ten? It might be. Um, the first, that's the not whole, like, the last. Thing. Certainly not the last. No, not the oh, last, unfortunately. A recent 0 0.5 entry, that's uh... Impressive. <laughs> Impressive, yeah. Hello, EFAP crew. You've all been doing amazing work as always. Started out with Mauler, made my way over here. Have some dollar dues. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh... We have jurisdiction everywhere, colonizers. Have to assume yep. it's a Falcon with a soldier reference. Yep. Is Max Lord's son named Tim Pool? I don't think so. I don't. Know. I don't even understand. No, I don't even. What that means. <laughs> um, if Fringy didn't splash his face with coffee, he would have been melted and then kissed himself. Oh, was did I? I can't remember because. Wait, did I splash my face with coffee? It doesn't sound like something. I feel like I'd remember that, because that's the strange thing to do. I definitely remember spilling coffee on my desk, but mm. I don't remember splashing coffee in my beak. Or is it you're imagining my beak in the coffee, just glug, glug, glug through the beak, which Damn. of course is not how it works. I thought this whole time you denied it when Rags called it a beak. I never denied that, the beak, that there's a beak in my mask. I'm just saying that to make me a <gasps> bird. I've never denied that the existence of the beak. It is a beak. It is absolutely a beak. You said a beak in your mask. I didn't say. I said a beak on my mask. Uh, <laughs> Man, sure. wow, just caught you with a bold-faced lie nope. right there. Well, you, know, you know, I'll... Sure, yeah, that's what you said. exactly. You got nothing. Mahler, Mahler and I know. We know. The truth is out there. Uh, if you want a great movie to watch, Raid and Raid 2 are great action films. Uh, they're the best movies this decade. Be a great watch for EFAP. So, I don't think they're the greatest movies of the decade, but I do like them. Um, I remember liking Raid 1 more than 2 as an overall film, though. You, you guys have seen Raid, right? Yeah. Or nope. have you not? I have not. We, you you I should. I hear good really things. They're really fun action movies, um, with a lot of emphasis on strong choreography. Um, like the fight, the fights are great. They're really that's what I hear all the time is that the fights yeah. are great. Raid Two's final fight is like, in terms of a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's one of the best. Um, legitimately, yeah, it always makes it to the that. top ten list of like best fights. Well, it's up there with like the Wheels on Meals. Um, yeah, like those sort of fights. It's a really great one, but um. Because uh, it's one of the benefits that the raid had is because it was such a claustrophobic setting, it meant that it was a lot easier to justify fights where everybody attacks one on one because there's not a lot of room for them to fight. Um, and of course, a limited setting as well, no means of escape. It's constant pressure. One of the cool things as well is it was kind of unclear when you're watching it who's going to live and die. It's not really clear who our protagonist is at the start. It becomes clearer towards the end, but. Like, everybody is at risk of dying. This is a really tense movie. Raid 2 had a, a lot of cool action scenes, but, like, the story of Raid 2 is much more a, a haze. I don't remember it as well. Uh, Baloo versus Shere Khan. Who wins? Uh, I feel like Shere Khan's got that I one. I think Shere Khan is... Well, they fight, remember? They do fight. Baloo does fight Shere Khan, and Shere Khan fucks up Baloo. Baloo puts up a oh. fight, but Baloo is not a... Blue is not a grizzly bear. He's a uh, yeah. he's, he's a he's a black bear, right? Like he seems, um, yeah, he's black and he, he is a black bear in he there. And he, he does, he's he's a uh, he's a very chill guy. 
And Shere Khan is feared more than all of the other animals. Well, he Shere he's Khan is like a, Shere Khan is he a is, He's not just a yeah. tiger. He's Shere Khan the tiger. Yeah. Specifically, he is particularly fierce and bloodthirsty. Everybody he says that the, uh, the John Favreau remake is better than the original, and I wonder Ooh, if I would really? like to watch him. Well, yeah, we, we can do sure that sometime. Um, yeah, I would love to watch the original again. I don't know about the, the remake, but we'll see. I, I've watched both of them. I remember. I, I've definitely watched the original. I remember watching the remake, and I was like, "Yeah, this is like fine," but I mean, I, I don't know why I would. I think it's just because the Jungle Book, the original, just doesn't have the same reputation as a lot of other Pixar. Uh, not Pixar, as a lot of other Disney classics. I think that I was the. Say... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, was gonna... I, I was well. I was going to say that it has one of one of my favorite songs in it is "I Want to Be band Like band You." Oh, okay. It, it it is one of my favorite songs that Disney's ever done. I love that the the big band jazzy kind of. It, it's just so upbeat and bouncy. I, I love I just love that song. I love that song. It's one of my favorites. I'm I've pretty ever done. sure that uh that the Jungle Book the original was the last film that Walt Disney produced. I think that oh. was the last one that he produced before he passed away. Hmm. Um, so I was definitely in the era because that was still like because it was the 80s was like kind of the hard time for Disney theatrical animations that was when they started running into trouble 70s and 80s um, and then Great Mouse Detective kind of helped keep them going and then Little Mermaid brought them back into like the spotlight And then they made Robin Hood in the 70s, I think, which they're remaking. <laughs> oh! Uh, oh! Yay. They can't go but remake more. Uh, the Teletubbies may harness the unholy energy of the Sun Baby, but don't underestimate the power of Yo Gabba Gabians and their Ewok Master. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. Uh, the Tiger was a significant threat during the war. Which one? Whenever someone says something like that, I assume World War One. Um, the tiger? Probably. Well, the, they're pro they might be referring to World War Two because the Germans had a tiger tank. Oh, they might be talking about the tiger. Oh, Wait, maybe they're doing sorry, to just be a play on words, but I'm assuming this is tied to the whole tiger versus bear question. Maybe. I figure because this might have been the genesis. Well, it was because uh, there was no no. Well, I'm 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 getting lost in my history. There was no. World War One never made it to India, but World War Two was like kind of close. Unless I'm mixing them up. No, no, I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, hmm. Maybe they are talking about the Tiger Tank and just playing on words. Maybe, yeah. Hashtag Team Grizzly Bear. Wow, we've already settled this one. It seems like the Grizzly Bear definitely is the winner. Um, yeah, he's an aggressive boy. Uh, He's a big boy. If we're talking subspecies, there's a subspecies of grizzly called the Kodiak bear that rivals a polar bear in yeah. size. Yeah, Kodiak was the one that's like, that one will mess mess you up. Do you like the band Ice Nine Kills? The early work was a little bit too seen for me, but when the Silver Scream, Silver Scream came out, I think they really came into their own commercially and artistically. No well, clue I'm not familiar is. with that band, so I could not tell you. I'm not the person to ask for that one. But Vringy, what about a Tiger versus 100 Midgets? Ooh. Uh, I feel like the Tiger definitely loses, but I mean, a lot of... 100 Midgets different. coordinated? It's like an ant there's colony. Gonna, there's going to be a lot of casualties, for sure, um, on that side. But nevertheless, I, I feel like... You do wonder, dependent on the arena, if the Tiger manages to... You know, like if you put the tiger in the jungle or something. If it, um, if, well, it if, yeah. it's, if it's aware of not looking to, you know, like you don't want to stay in one place too long. It just, it moves around and swipe, swipe, and they don't have presume, any weapons outside of their bodies. I guess you would presume that they would coordinate to stick together and not split up. Just walk yeah. around in a giant circle and never The split organization up. and intelligence of midgets is not something to be understated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I feel like, um, I feel like it, it's... I feel like most animals, I feel like a polar bear would be one that, that would be really difficult to take down, um, even if you had a hundred people working, well, a hundred people working together, that, that'd be tough. That's, 
Yeah, it's just I don't know any animal that isn't like a germ that would that wouldn't be able to kill a, a hundred or that would be able to kill a hundred people, especially because humans are very resourceful and cooperative. I think uh, and hippo might be a challenge because like I don't know what it means it's for you to be able to. Well, so I remember I saw an image a couple of days ago that was just like hippos are like not fat. That's muscle. Like the them being really big ain't fat. That is muscle. Um, so any attempt to try and kill a hippo is going to be really difficult if you have no weapons. And even if you have weapons, you know. Definitely um, some really crazy critters out there. Yeah. Yeah. This one just says bear. Oh, <laughs> bear. 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 Discovery's Animal Face-Off, Season 1, Episode 7, Tiger vs. Bear. Oh, they did that already. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me, I guess, right? That's got to be something people have asked before. And I yeah. wonder if they go into, like, all the different species and what the likelihoods Maybe are. Maybe they would, because different, different, because, like, a, a, you put up a Siberian tiger against a black bear, the tiger wins. Um, like, every time, I would imagine. You put him up against a brown bear, it's a little more complicated. You put him up against a polar bear, it's no contest. The polar bear wins. <laughs> I find it kind of interesting that polar bears... Polar bears have a reputation that does not befit how fearsome they really are. I think, like, a lot of people would think that a grizzly bear is scarier than a polar bear, when polar bears are, like, they are not afraid of humans. They will hunt humans. I think That's it's because how... polar bears just are so rarely encountered by humans. They, they live way off in places that humans generally aren't i um, think i would so say that class... i think the reason why is because polar bears just don't look as fearsome as grizzly bears grizzly bears are like probably I, yeah. I think a lot, unless I think you get a, a picture with blood are... when they got blood on them uh, then they look fucking terrifying yeah yeah white fur. but i exactly i think it's i think it's a few things i don't think people fully appreciate just how big polar bears are i think if you were to ask a lot of people what the largest one is they'd say a grizzly bear when of course it is a polar bear by a decent margin um and I, I think it is as well that uh i don't think that people often associate like arctic animals with ferociousness i think that like the, the idea of a grizzly bear in the forest like you said right because of humans encountering them i think that just seems more threatening than and if think... you're walking around in the arctic in a polar bear you know like saw you yeah <laughs> um so i think uh, culture has a lot to do with it too and sharks yeah. are generally the go-to example Same. of that. Yeah. Jaws, yeah, for right. instance. Sharks are, they're very ferocious predators. They look very intimidating. Um, there's that element of they're in the water. And, mm -hmm. you know, culture has sort of, it made them seem a lot more deadly and fierce than they really are against people. Whereas polar bears, Meanwhile. you see them in Coca-Cola commercials and they're having a great <laughs> time and, you know, things of that nature. So... And Maybe as well, I'll... kind of like the poster child of um, climate change, right? Like often the first well, save the polar bears, about yeah. The polar bear. Well, save I want to save the polar bears too. I guess it's just I the, do. When you, when you think about a polar bear, I also like want to save myself from them. So <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like, I guess uh, what I would say is apt as a comparison for sharks is like you got much more reason to be afraid of like a killer whale than you do a, than you do a shark. Like killer whales are ferocious, but they're whales. You know, like, I don't know that there's that. And dolphins as well are kind of fearsome, too, in a sense. Yeah. Like, they seem and super rapey. friendly, but I mean, like, they're, they're, yeah, dolphins. Whereas sharks, it's like, I guess it is just the look versus what they're actually capable of. Like, even an orchid has a bit of a friendlier face than a shark, <laughs> but it's not friendlier at all. <laughs> Uh, Fringy was wrong about Bojack. Can we truly trust his opinion on tigers? Hi, Rex. I was Hello. right about Bojack in the end. In the That's end? You were right at the beginning, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like... I, 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 people did like the hot take, and that's okay. It is okay. okay. You knew it wasn't a popular one. You knew that going I in. I that, yeah. Just the reality. Uh, I feel like Rags has a slight feline prejudice. So on variants, why do these exist at all if there's only one timeline? Oh, sorry, that's a different thing then. Uh, uh well, cats are fine. I'm totally cool with cats. Um, cats are great. Cats really like me. Uh, sorry, my owner. Uh, they, they uh, when I'm over at a family member's house or oh, here, uh, when I'm over at a family member's house, 
or a friend's house. Cats seem to warm up to me quite a bit. I don't know what it is about me if I just look approachable to a cat for whatever reason, if my particular features or my chill out. I don't know what it is, but cats tend to really like me. And cats, I'm totally cool with cats. Cats are cool. Um, so just get that out of the way uh, right off the bat there. Um, and what was the second part here? The... Well, they said uh, why, uh, if uh, on variants, why do they exist at all if there's only one timeline? It's just they branch off, and that's how they exist. Yeah, that's yeah. The, there's the, the sacred timeline, and everything that isn't a part of that sacred timeline is essentially a mistake that needs to be trimmed. Yeah, and like when Loki because if, does the thing, they're like, we gotta fix the timeline he just created by dropping a grenade in it and then taking him out of it because he's the one that fucked it up. When in reality, he's not at all. It was fucking the Avengers that it fucked it up. Avengers. Yeah. Um, regarding No Man's Sky versus a criminal who's had to serve time, the critical difference is that Hello Games was not punished, they were rewarded. They were totally punished, what do you mean? They were absolutely punished. To, to say, like, to have your reputation literally be as low as possible throughout the entire world to the point where you can't show your face. How's Only that? to then silently be working to actually restore things and make things right. Yeah, like, and if, you, if you're saying, yeah, but they never serve time, I should be like, I don't know if, whether or not they, they serve time. They had consequences for yeah, but whether or not they serve time I... is dependent on whether or not they've actually broken a law explicitly. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know that they did. Uh, but they, they serve their fucking social destruction time. I don't, I don't know. There and to, to be fair, I don't, I don't know that I demand they go to jail. I don't, I don't know why, why we would. False advertising. Like, I don't even I don't know. I don't... Extreme. The problem is, as we've gone over so many times with all these cases, like it may not have been false advertising as far as they were concerned. They may have had a build exactly, that yeah. had what they were talking about, but once they What's compiled that? it with everything else, it fucking fell apart. We don't know. It's a part of video game development, is there are things that you can try to implement that it eventually becomes clear that it was never going to work, and that's like, yeah, this oh, is... damn. To a degree, right? I'm not taking responsibility off them for what they, they said, but like, hype culture is fucking responsible for this shit. You, like, everyone's encouraging everyone to make big claims. Isn't there, like, who's the guy who's famous for this? The one behind Fable and stuff? Oh, Peter, Peter Molyneux. Molyneux. Yeah, he says, yeah. like, he's you like, oh, the game the will have this, that, hard. and the other. His yeah. name is forever associated and inseparable <laughs> from you are delivery. making promises. Yeah, that yeah. you just, that will not, that will just not well, happen. Well, Todd Howard as well, right? Todd Howard has that reputation, too. Yeah, he does, kind of. Yeah, he absolutely does. Nobody wants to hear about how you might have some awesome stuff. <laughs> it's like, no, I want to. I want you to say you definitely will, so I can get hype without uh, feeling bad that it might not happen and stuff. It's, uh, yeah, uh, it's unfortunate, and um, yeah, I, I don't. I would need to be convinced that they they should have gone to jail for what they've done. Uh, what a midweek-ish EFAP. Here's some flute balls. Oh yeah, we, we did, we've done EFAPs in the middle of the week before, it's happened, it's been known to happen. Um, Azamola, the fuck's going on in your country? Have they not seen South Park? Online ID? I'm embarrassed for you guys, and my president is Dr. Jill Biden. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to with this one, exactly. Maybe it's the, the Vax passes. On the topic of animal fights, let's bring in some fantasy animals from Monster Hunter. Look up Astalos and Rathalos. Which one do you think would win? Oh, As I As know about Rath Astalos. Rathalos. That's um. Oh. Rathalos is awesome. It's one of the, the, I'd say it's one of the most famous Monster Hunter bad guys. If they're in like all the games. What's the other so one? Then? Um, As Astalos. Astalos. Yeah. So I'm gonna look up. I got pictures pulled up of them. I don't know Astalos anything about Monster Hunter, first. but Rathalos looks awesome. <laughs> so... Dragons are awesome. Um... I Careful, feel it's a like... it's wyvern, idiot. That's true, right. it's the wyvern it's because... Two legs, right? because... Yeah, two legs, legs and its front yeah. its front limbs are the wings. It just saved you from getting so. perma cancelled there, Bringy. Yeah. Right. Look, dragons so there's, and wyverns There's awesome, drakes, okay? wyverns, but, uh, dragons... Drakes, wyvern, dragons. There's worms, but I think those are not. There's yeah, worms, wyverns, drakes, dragons, and they're all like similar, but it has to do with like their alignment of limbs and what their wings are not. Point being, 
I don't know if kobolds are a part of it. I don't think so. It depends. Kobolds are generally different, but... I'm looking at pictures of Astalos and Rathalos, and I'm trying to... I couldn't tell you which one when I I don't know. I don't know enough about Monster Hunter. I have no clue. I <laughs> think Rathalos looks really cool. <laughs> Rathalos does look cool. He looks like dinosaur like, you know. He's got that dinosaur look to him. He looks a little bit more chonkier, but the other one looks sharper. Uh yeah, I don't know. I suppose I could see them both kind of going toe to toe. I think Astalos looks like he might be deadlier. He looks more armored. Like, oh. What, and what sharp. Um, well, I can't show images, and I'm I, I, I'm familiar with I them, but I, I, it's like get, basically what Rags has said is pretty much all I would say. Yeah, right. a lot of this has to do with because I'm now I don't know what their sizes are based off of this the, these pictures, right? Oh, I, it'll be on the wiki. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Do we have a size? So that they both have in-game units, but. That's fine, I can compare them to. It looks like they are. I guess that means male and female, right? The little two crowns? I'm gonna assume so. I'm gonna assume that generally we have sexual dimorphic species. Or does it? Or is that like height and width? Because it looks like a, a crown. To crown. Judging by the size is it looks like they're almost identical in size. Yeah, they're basically the same size based off these numbers, if I'm reading them correctly, which I may not. I'm just going off of sheer numbers. Um, yeah, I while I look the like, I, I look the like. I like the look of Rathalos quite a bit. It looks almost like it could be real in a sense, like a dinosaur sort of thing, a dinosaur wyvern. Um, and Astalos looks very silly. Yeah, I don't know who'd win. I think Astalos might, because it looks more armored and sharper. It looks more like a fantasy creature uh, that I couldn't quite believe happening. Like, I could, I can look at Rathalos and be like, oh, okay, that maybe looks like I could believe some planet's evolution made a creature that was kind of like that. But Astalos is just like, what the fuck is this? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have not played the Monster Hunter games. I've heard they're fun. But I have not played them. Uh, watch Jesse Gender review of Loki final episode. She loves new track, is a friend of Steve Shives, and thinks that Star Trek 2009 is a masterpiece. That's a. I like how you just have. She's a friend of Steve Shives. That just gets <laughs> <right>. <laughs> it's an oddly specific if Steve, thing. If if you can be friends with Steve Shives, I do wonder what kind of person you are, because of how insane he is at like associating with people. Yeah, I like, even, uh, he boots he's, you he's out. Still around, right? he's, I think uh, he's still around. I guess. Sure. Let me take a look. Steve Shives. Last video was 19 hours ago. Um, okay, so I'm still very much makes... active. He has one of the worst profile icons. Here, let me show you. Is his, uh, his icon for YouTube. It's just like... one of It's, it's one of the worst. That's a weird framing. <laughs> like, there's a lot of negative space just for yeah. some reason. These are very that's, bizarre. That's, nah, that's odd. Of... That's actually odd. You're right, Rex. Right? That's a really bizarre, like, profile picture. There's so Most much people would want to center themselves, but he's it's... different. He's different. It's not only not centered, it doesn't seem to be off centered <laughs> for any artistic reason. No, it it's just like, a, like a, a plant back there. Yeah, it looks like a mistake. <laughs> Like, he didn't know that he could readjust the picture with an editor or something like that. Because there's just a plant over there and a white wall, and you can see the crease of the ceiling. And I think that's also that his head is quite small relative to the size the of the body. Frame. Yeah. Like, his body takes up, like, a fourth of the whole picture. And I, and I imagine it has nothing to do with the actual size of his head. It's just framing, um, perspective. I don't know what's happened. That's odd. That's really odd. I'm not sure why it would be like that. Um... Let me, yeah, he does. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Star Trek. Yeah, he does Star Trek stuff for the most part. As I, as I'm pretty. Yeah, I think that's what he's done for ages. Is just Star Trek stuff. Well, good for him. Good unions and police unions. Interesting title. Uh, hmm. 
Didn't Doctor Strange is multiple realities in Infinity War? Interesting question. <laughs> now, yeah, at this stage, isn't it? Not exactly understood what he did with the fucking time stone exactly. Like, did he look into the multiverse and see all alternate pathways this could all end up based on choices? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he did. Whatever it was, it was bullshit. <laughs> yeah, one? Really? One? Nah. Sorry. No, no one believes you. No one. No one does. Not even that doctor that you spoke to. Yeah, well, the, the film has the balls to ask the question and then doesn't do anything with it because I don't even know what the film's point is in terms of its answer to that question. Our answer is you were a reckless fool yeah. who cost the world so much. <laughs> while the film's perspective seems to be, yeah, you know what? You shouldn't sacrifice one person to save the multiverse. Like, wait, what? Why? <laughs> like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. A lack of um, a differing perspective that's presented to him that would maybe force him to explain his position that that doesn't happen. It is it is very weird that this well, what is clearly okay. the wrong position to take is just flat out um, just called the good thing. I think it's a persistent problem in these movies is that there will be two perspectives that must compete, and unfortunately, one of them is pretty indefensible. Um, but the indefensible one will be the one that doesn't have all of the appropriate questions raised, and if they're raised, they won't be answered. There'll be a fight, so that you don't have to if, think about it. If Multiverse of Manus originally had the, the Illuminati question him for how he made the wrong decision regarding yeah. thingy, that could make some sense in terms of them changing it to incursions, because incursions just fuck the narrative. I don't think incursions were, were made with this in, in mind. By it the way... It, yeah. I brought up all the incursion fuckery to on, on an open bar catch-up, and I, uh, there was a comment on there that said, um, I love how much Mola just doesn't understand what is meant by incursions, and I was like, ooh, I need to see stuff like this, because, like, if I've missed an obvious component that can make the whole film make more sense, it genuinely could improve it by, like, an entire point, because the incursions really fuck everything up. And they were like, incursions only happen when there's more than one of you. That's the point. Oh, that makes it even worse if that's the case in Doctor well, Strange. It barely it's fixes Doctor anything. Strange. Yeah. Um, and they went on to say, a revised version of this actually isn't that it's more than one of you, it's when you're in places you're not supposed to be. The reason it doesn't apply to America is because she's supposed to be all over the multiverse. According to whom? And I was just like, wait a minute. Wait, and you're also, supposed to be? Supposed to be. Because like, like, that's... I thought I it made some sense when it's like you have like a residue of your universe and when you go to a different one it's like it's an incongruent material and thus the universe starts to get unstable. It's like, okay, I can buy that. But being like, you're not supposed to be here. It's like, what does that mean? It says who? According to whom? The arbiter of all existence? Yeah, like you gotta, mechanically that doesn't... Well, anyway. that you don't understand incursions then say these things. I don't know, um, because then they went on to say... To be fair, Mola would still be able to poke holes in this, because that really only accounts for America. I was like, yeah, the incursion thing I was talking about applies to, uh, to Doctor Strange, people. her yeah. parents, like, uh, uh, Scarlet Witch. Yeah, like, uh, your explanation really helps one element, and even then it doesn't, because his reasoning for how she belongs everywhere and thus wouldn't cause an incursion is that she has the power. It's like, yeah, but her power can be taken. So... Does anyone who has her power then is allowed to be everywhere? Is that how that works? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. It seems like it's just really bad writing. Yeah, and the comment finished off with saying, to be fair, I shouldn't have to, like, headcanon all this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because you just oh, made all this up. That you just it sounds, it sounds like the, the comments has had a bit of an arc there. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. kind of but it is all just headcanon in the end. They're like, then why do you put the, what that does? What? Then why are you talking to me for? So, um, yeah, I... We'll hopefully discover how the incursions make sense one day, but I'm almost certain now that they were added uh, in exchange for a different storyline, which would have been more so about Doctor Strange's decision in Infinity War. Uh, which, to me, is much better. If you actually had the Illuminati say, like, our universe Doctor Strange did one of the suggestions we've always had, right? And it worked really well. Why the hell didn't you do that? Yeah. And, and it's, we just have to write it that it's a reality that he really overthought the situation and never considered some of the most obvious and simple choices. Which sucks, but like, what else can you do at that point? What can you do once you've established what you did in Infinity War? 
And um, yeah, maybe it's a matter of he looked into the time stone, saw that solution, and didn't want to risk any other ones because he knew that one would work, as opposed to the others that might not. And then they, they can explain to him, like, just because a plan isn't, like, perfect doesn't mean you should then opt for the one that causes the most damage but will work or something, and then have a discussion about that. Should you go for the 99% workable plan or the 100% one that costs, like, a shit ton of damage to the world? Which I think right, is more interesting that's a question. Conversation. Yeah. yeah. And the film could have been Alas. About that. Alas, that's not what happened. No, not even close. Um here's one I've used as an icebreaker. How many permanently enraged four year olds would it take to murder a permanently enraged adult silverback gorilla enclosed in a bare square room before it drowns in gore? Hmm, no suggestion so far. Wait, drown in gore. Sorry, read read that one more time. I I got lost halfway through for some reason. I'm assuming you just didn't hear the first part. <laughs> like, I I don't think I don't even think I don't even know if I did. Do you hear it, Fringy? Uh, I did, but so, I mean I don't even know where to begin with this one. You got your four. Let's let's set the stage. You got your square room. I don't even know how large this square room is, but it's a square room and it's bare. There is nothing in this room. And then we spawn an adult silverback gorilla, and we apply permanent rage as a variable into him. And then we have the question of how many also enraged four-year-olds would it take to either kill him or drown him in gore. Okay. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't think... I don't know if four-year-olds have the you... capacity to kill an <laughs> angry silver gorilla. Think, yeah, yeah, I don't I think they can. I don't know if numbers even helps. I don't know that that's even a thing that would help. Um, and also, like, there's no way to ascertain the second parameter if we don't know how large the room is. So this is kind of an unworkable question. Yeah. Sorry. I just, um... I guess they threw in the whole drownable with gore thing because they, they also assumed there's a chance that we would assume that the four-year-olds don't have a chance at all. Yeah. Unfortunately, you forgot to account for how large the room is, so... Well, no to be fair, to... That, I guess that answers their own question. However long it takes to fill it to the point where the gorilla can't survive. Yeah, so you do the math on that one. <laughs> yeah. <funny. laughs> uh, what was the point of the reality stone? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the point of the stones is, really. I mean, they, they were they said they represent fundamental parts of reality or something, right? Control? Do they say I control? Guess, they each control an essential aspect of existence is the exact quote, I believe, from Wong. Makes you the wonder what it means reality, to destroy them. Reality, well, it's just... Yeah. Well, apparently there was an interview where the Russo said, like, oh, they destroyed means they're, like, reduced to atoms means exactly that. The atoms still exist in the universe. <laughs> it's like, hmm. Don't know about that one. I, I think what I mean is, like, reality, space, I understand that. Power, uh, I can do a bit of wiggle room. Maybe energy, you know, energy stone might be a better way to describe it. Reality, though, that's, like, everything. Time is reality, you know? Reality just seems to be the magic stone. That seems to be how it works. Like, you can change matter. Yeah. Or I guess, uh, maybe that would be better. The matter stone. You can change the properties of, um, of, uh, of something. It depends how scientific we want to get, mm -hmm. <laughs> really. With these stones. And then, of course, the soul stone. Don't know how you account for that. Um, in this universe. Do dogs have souls? I'd like to think so. If souls exist, which they probably don't. But if they did, oh, like no, dogs or cats would, uh, would slot in. Silverback gorillas. For sure. Uh, dare I ask who... Dare I ask who win Teletubbies or back Yardigans? Back Didn't we do that? Ooh. I, think we I don't know. I was going to say, but... I think, I'm pretty sure we did it in a similar stream we did the Tiger Bear stuff. It reminds me. Maybe, it maybe. Like something we talked about. I Almost think the Backyardigans, in. though. I just don't yeah, even think the Teletubbies have the capacity. Yeah, you went I said Teletubbies because they have the Sun God on their side. Oh, <laughs> I don't... Oh, I... What... Yeah. Do the... 
Is it on their side, or is it totally. just around? It, it smiles upon them every day. It'll defend them. I, maybe it's it, maybe it smiles on everyone. We don't know. It smiles upon them every day. <laughs> That's their universe. The backyardigans don't get the fucking sun god. Well, if they're different. Well, this was well. If we have the backyardigans fighting the Teletubbies, let us assume that the sun god does smile upon the Teletubbies. We don't know how it views the backyardigans. I yeah, believe like, that this baby oh, is. Man, it's man, like. It is a very egalitarian. I mean, baby Teletubbies sun refers god. to the show, not necessarily individually the Teletubbies. As far as I'm concerned, it's all of the elements of the show versus the ah. other show. Hmm. I don't know the backyardigans. Their whole the the whole thing is that each one of their episodes they have their own adventures. Where they Teletubbies are cyborgs powered warriors. by a sun god. I think they win. Are they? I guess they have a tail of it. Or is that <laughs> magic? <laughs> I, yeah. Hmm. I think the backyardigans are like older and they have the capacity to like speak and to enact plans and things of that nature. I think they're more competent. And I think there's more of them. Yeah, I just don't think these variables think, really match up to the sun. God. The sun yeah. But all it does is it shows up for. Oh, it's never been minutes. angry on the show. <laughs> but if they're telling somebody's <laughs> lives were to come under threat. <laughs> You would understand the wrath of the yeah, sun I need, god. I need to see that TV show. That feels like a, a, a an episode there. You know, it the, feels like Flash Kids would make that. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. Like like you would smash through and defeat the Teletubbies and feel like you've won, and then you look like the it, camera pans. You just start melting. Yeah. The, the baby is fucking well. angry with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Gears of Wars Lambent versus Flood or Necromorphs? Uh, I think the Flood win every time. Yeah. Um, I think we've had this conversation before. Because the Flood before. can assimilate the Lambent. Um, the Lambent lose the out of the three. Uh, I know that. Out of the three for sure. The Necromorphs is an interesting one because the Necromorphs are dead. Whereas like an aspect with the Flood is they assimilate living beings. And the um, Necromorphs presumably can infect they can, yeah they can infect the dead as well like they can grab a corpse and turn it into a necromorph which have is, to be dead, i think uh, that oh right? wait no i mean because i think the necromorph you must be dead to be a necromorph that's what um, the that's what they, the 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 essentially the warrior but, forms are supposed to be doing they the make flood, the dead bodies but the flood assimilate dead bodies too so they both can do that and so I guess it's a question of what would what is more powerful, a flood spore or just the necromorph as an entity? Which is the marker, and I think right? That Which we is talked the marker about this earlier. Yeah. The the necromorphs have a a mental component. Uh, they do. That was well, uh, the flood uh, with the grave mind. In terms of well, the like grave mind, grave mind seems like biological yeah. control versus psychic power or something from the marker. Yeah, because yeah, the marker uh, definitely has a psychic component. That's true. Well, so that the Unless idea I'm with the great mind is, that, um, well, I guess the thing is that they both assert a level of control and influence over the smaller um, entities. Like the the, the the flood, the flood forms will do what the grave mind wants because the grave mind is the consciousness of the flood, essentially. And in the same sense, the marker is the consciousness so of you wonder, like, the local necromorph outbreak. I guess we can't say, but it, to me, intuitively, it feels like the marker would trump the. The well, flood, here's, so I'm not sure. here's what I, here's here's the big thing that I think tips it in the flood in the necromorph's favor. What what is the peak form of the flood? It would seem to be the grave mind. The peak form of the necromorph is a brethren moon, a living planet, essentially. Yeah, and the necromorphs have um, shit tons of these enormous bosses as well. You know. Well, it's just you think about the convergence as a thing that creates the brethren moon. I don't know that there's anything that the flood has that is equivalent to that for as powerful as they Maybe. are. Maybe one to one in terms of a thing, but like one necromorph versus one flood. Um, well, I'm saying well, like the problem it, with that is it, 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 it's like on, let's say it depends on the form. Both of them, yeah. Well, yeah, because there's a difference between a flood carrier and a flood soldier, and like a flood spore. N necromorphs um, have like invincible boy, but they also have like foot soldiers. Well, guess, the invincible um, boy was a result of human tampering. Does he not count though? Um. 
I wonder if I want to count I that if it's the results I, of human tampering. I don't, I don't know, know because that was a that was like specifically like a human experiment. But like he's classified as a necromorph, isn't he? Sure. Should we factor in? Um, hmm. I'm just wondering. Should we factor in how easily destroy? Because to what? If you destroy the marker, that doesn't like end the necromorph outburst, does it? The necromorphs will still, or does it? Am I, I don't. Well, I don't know because in the. I let's see. I'm trying to think. Because um, the way that works with the the flood is, if there is a single flood spore, it can turn into an outbreak. You have to destroy every single flood, everything, in order to stop the flood. Whereas with the necromorphs, it's like, I guess you would need to kill all of them, but what happens if you destroy a marker? What what happens in the... And just being in the... Like, if you're I'm pretty just sure the markers have been destroyed marker. in the games, right? Am I, am I like... I'm... You de you destroy the... In the first game, you the don't game. destroy it, right? They take it to the sprawl, and then you no, destroy the one in the don't. sprawl, or am I mixing them up? So in the first Dead Space, you end up dropping the planet chunk oh from that's the right that's right from the ishimura yeah yeah and it's and it i think it's confirmed it destroys the marker and then using the patterns in your head they, they oh that's the right they construct the marker yeah, yeah that's right and because of all the bodies in the sprawl it starts a convergence the event convergence, but you stop it you stop, stop it, it. Uh, uh so in the third one you come across the, the original i think I have to play it again and make sure and, or I just well, have to so it up again. The, the way that was in Dead Space 3 is that you go to the planet Tal Volantis and you find out that there was a convergence that was happening there, but they flash froze the whole planet and that stopped the convergence. And then I think it starts up again right at the end. There's a convergence, like because of your interference, and then and then you stop that. Yeah, because the whole um, point was you have to like the, the marker is essentially tricking you into turning off the mechanism that kept the planet frozen. Yeah, and now once you turn it off, it can start convergence, and you have to stop it. Man, Which they should like make do. more Dead Space games. <laughs> you know, it's a really cool IP. It, it, it really cool... is super cool. I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm simultaneously very excited and very concerned because it remake. is right here about the remake. It looks really awesome so far, but they got to get the gameplay we'll right. So we will see January next year, I think. Hmm. So no, that's closer see. than I thought it was. God damn. I'm uh I love the first Dead Space and so I, I'm really excited to see. I um, uh I really like Dead Space one and but I, I like two a lot. Um three I don't think I played that much of. I just know like what happened in the I end. just I just have the normie perspective. One is one of my favorite games. And then two is like mechanically felt better, but atmosphere was lost for me. It felt like it was a lot less scary by trying to be more scary, even. Uh, yeah, as, the, uh, I really love two. I really love two, uh, but yeah, it is the atmosphere wasn't. It didn't hit me. It didn't really grip me. Though gameplay wise, it is absolutely an improvement. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, um, I think Dead Space One has a similar thing with Halo. It's a really tight concept that uh, that marries well with like the gameplay. Just you are on a ship and the ship is infested, and yeah. you are stuck on this ship as opposed to you're on a big space station that's you know infested, a big space Look station with a bunch of different entities fighting one another. Dead Space is opening when it's just that room and the lights flickering and flashing, yeah. and all your fucking teammates just getting annihilated and blood splatter, and it's just like run. And you're just like oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> like... Mm -hmm. Isaac Clarke is also a super, even in the f though in the first game he doesn't speak, is like, damn, this poor fucker, he's just having it's such a bad <laughs> day. The communication relay. It's maybe, it, my, it, um, he's maybe my boomerism speaking, but like playing Dead Space and getting fully immersed and Bioshock and getting fully immersed, like, I don't know when the last time I did that was. Like a brand new game where I like felt like it really, well, really uh, escapism style where you're just like, you're in there, you know? Uh, Red Dead for Redemption me, 2 was like that for me. That was a really immersive experience. I think for me, it was probably like to that super degree of I am in the game. It's probably Hellblade. Interesting. I remember there were times when I'd just be playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm like, this this world is beautiful. Like, you just look out and it's like, my god. <laughs> like, this place in feels so real. It almost kind of happened tonight while I was playing Sea of Thieves, because uh, you're you and three other people were on you're on this pirate ship, 
and you have to, in order to navigate, you have your, depending on the size of your ship, you have different amounts of sails. So we were on a galleon, we had three sails, and so you raise and lower the sails, but you also um, trim the sails, which is get them to face the wind, because there is a wind in the game, and you try to use that to help speed up your ship and whatnot. And you also have the wheel that turns the ship, and you have your compasses, and you have a map, but the map is below deck inside of a thing. You look out on the map, and it is it is streamlined enough to where you don't, you don't feel like you're ever fighting the game or any of its mechanics, but you're out there on the ocean. The ocean works really well in terms of like liquid in a video game, so you go up and down on the waves, and you're steering the ship, and it's a very big ship, so it doesn't steer like one-to-one. -one. You turn the wheel, and then it does the thing, and then you balance it out. And we're following this little quest line where we're following these clues and we have to go to this place and then this place. And then we use the clue to find out kind of where we need to go. And we're like, we multiple people were in the bottom of the, or in the, the inside of the ship over the map, looking at the map and we can draw circles on the map and we'll be like, okay, the clue said this and they were trying to go from here to here. And then they said they went to this place. So we need to search around this area to find the thing and it was like we were really, we were doing the thing, you know? And it had, you felt this real big connection to Europe. You're on a ship trying to complete a mission and you're you're doing stuff. And it didn't feel like video gamey. It felt like we were all putting our heads together to make this happen. And it, it gives you those kinds of feelings, which is similar, but different, but enough to where it's like, wow, like for, there was a time where I was really immersed in doing this work. Yeah, I wonder if it's a matter of me having been younger, or if it's a matter of me not playing enough games to find the experiences well, like that. Well, the games that you described are games that I would even say like, th those are smallish spaces, there, there's a, there is a kind of narrative going on, there is a unified art style to things, they're very atmospheric, um... It's single player, so maybe you don't have other humans you're talking to to kind of distract you in a sense. You're really kind of focused on the game as a game. And maybe those things just combine because Dead Space and Bioshock are ones that I would say to this day are very immersive. I love them. I, I do love them. I absolutely love them. Love them, love them. Even like Bioshock 2, I was like in. I was in there. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. funnily enough, Bioshock 2 is one of those games that fits the same bill as a lot of uh, things I used to hate, but in retrospect, don't anymore. Uh, but for a very specific reason, but still loved it. Just, it just, uh, the Sophia Lamb stuff really fucking annoyed me. Because um, it felt like she came out of nowhere and she completely supplants Andrew Ryan because they yeah. killed Andrew Ryan in the first game and they need a new villain. So, that annoys the fuck out of me. But, like, what, what creates that same animosity today is stuff that's like actually really bad and deserving of that kind of response where Bioshock 2 is actually pretty good. Oh yeah, gameplay wise it was a, it was an improvement over the first and they I think for the second time they nailed the atmosphere, so to speak. Um yeah, it's the, always the, great the, to go back to Rapture especially oh, yeah. when they nail it. Yeah, the style, all the art, just the the look of this run down underwater city that's falling apart. They nailed it again. And, it, and I remember the you, um, you just, Minerva's Den, the DLC, was actually, like, incredibly solid as a mini-story. I fully What about recommend. Burial of Sea? Um, what game is that a part of again? Infinite. Wait, that's Infinite, right? Or am I mixing up that the name? That answers Rick. your question. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, you know, I heard it got great reviews, like, Bioshock did. It did. Yeah. Bioshock fans absolutely loved Burial at Sea. Because and, Rapture. But you're a Bioshock fan. Do you do you like Burial at Sea? Um, am I the only one that played that out of the three of us? I, I have played not. It. I think I own it, but I, I haven't played it. You should uh, torture yourself one day and replay Bioshock One, and then play Burial at Sea. Um, <laughs> well, I want to replay Bioshock, so yeah. I did. I did that. recently on on stream. I said recently, it was like half a year ago. But like, man, it's just it just holds up. It's not perfect, obviously, but what a fun experience it is to play a Bioshock game. Have you you've played the Bioshocks, right, Fringy? I played Bioshock One, I and oh. Infinite. I haven't played uh two. I you think I have two. to. Yeah, I, you, I know. You should. I should. I should. Um, uh, the it 
even the first Bioshock, it it ages so well because it's got yeah, no, that it's, it's style definitely. to it. And it's a cool oh, the game, you know? like, it's, it's a cool, cool. game. <laughs> That's it lends itself to like every genre of a media. I don't see how it didn't explode into a franchise. Well, I think they still want to make it. I think that Bioshock 4 is a thing that's happening. Um, and that, sometime soon as well. It got tied up all over the place with like red tape and stuff. I remember back when Bioshock 2 was like coming out that there was theories about it being turned into a movie. Um, yeah. And like potential just never coalesced. Uh, it's so like, I feel like it's, it's just, it's begging to be a movie or a, a well, miniseries. And now it's going to be a thinking show, I suppose. And that's the thing. It's like, well, you get your wish, right? And it's like, not in this era. Um, if it were made <laughs> back then, maybe. I like that. It's now it's a curse. It's like, you said you wanted it. No! I don't this know what is it is. It's I... like, we're just in this weird world where, like, unfortunately, you can guess and you're probably going to be right that something's going to be really shittily done. If This is because of Halo that I'm feeling this way. Uh, uh yeah. It what a one of fucking things. annihilation. I was trying to explain this to uh, um, someone last night, I can't remember, but it, it's just someone who wasn't familiar with Halo, and I was like, I think it was Drinker, I think, because he's, he's, he's out of the loop on it, and I was like, they've got their own, like, TLJ moment happening right now. Well, I think uh, the funny thing is that Peter Jackson, back in 2007, or I think it was Peter Jackson producing and Neil Blomkamp directing, there was going to be a Halo project, and it just never materialized. And I guarantee you that one would have been leagues ahead of this shit. Oh, they, they, I would uh, absolutely... Halo, would, I'd... Halo Landfall, I think, was uh, the short that they made around 2007. It was really cool, considering it had no budget. Um, I think, I think what's really stuck is... I don't know, Mola may not remember it. Rags, do you remember... You you probably remember the Deliver Hope one, but do you remember the ODST uh, commercial? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's two minutes long, and it's got f it's just superior storytelling to the show. Absolutely. Like, it's, it's down to the little touches, like the fact that the ODST captain, who we've been following from like when he was a teenager through the boot camp and then fighting, that he carries around an ODST flag in his armor just to make sure that whenever an ODST dies, they can at least have that honor of like having the, the flag draped across their grave and that he carries that around. It's like this storytelling man for a fucking commercial, like with way less money and you've achieved something way more impressive narratively uh, and technically as well. I, I think that it's a way more uh, immersive, like it's, it's a really gritty sort of action. And it's the same with Deliver Hope. It's like, again, storytelling on a small scale. Um, and it's just crazy that commercials 10 years ago with less money have achieved more oh, yeah. than a $100 million production. I, that saying, had all the the, I wish the honeymoon phase would just be over faster with all of these things. Like, I, I genuinely think that's what's happening with Doctor Strange 2. Give it time and people will talk more about time, the fact that Vision wasn't mentioned at all in this film, that it's disjointed, the pacing's horrendous, that, like, Doctor Strange doesn't actually make any real decisions himself in this film. Like, all these, all these things that are more intuitively frustrating will get yeah. to the audience more. Eventually. And I guess it's like, yeah, so. can we just skip that? <laughs> once, that the, once that kind of the, the, the allure and the awe of all the visuals goes away and it's not new and fresh in their minds anymore and they could be, dare I say, a bit more objective about it. Yeah, I think so. I think I mean, so. it happened with No Way Home. People started to turn on that movie eventually when, when it first came out. Everybody loved it give it time it was weird yeah but it, was, it wasn't surprising it was just like there it is batman has survived though it seems like the batman has uh thus far managed to get through i've seen some without attempts anybody really turning on it at viral tweets where they go uh unfortunately the batman was mid and then people would be like oh, okay. saying something's mid on twitter means you're saying it's bad um pretty much <laughs> at this um. point i think anyway yeah. but yeah uh there I think even Jack Sane put out a tweet saying that he thought Batman was fine. And, um, oh boy. Yeah. Okay, people are depending on it, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I think that was the first he'd even seen of it. So, you know, it's, it's ongoing. Um, but I think the hate for No Way Home was definitely higher. And it, it was visually related because it was fucking trailers for Doctor Strange making people hate No Way Home. Which is funny, right? The I turnaround. Know. It's yeah. like, who cares about the previous stepping stone? We stood on that earlier. It's not the thing we're standing <laughs> on now. Yeah. So yeah, uh, once Thor Love and Thunder rolls around, people will be like, I hope this one does blah 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 blah, because Doctor Strange 2 didn't. And then someone else was like, yeah, Doctor Strange 2, you wasn't know, that wasn't, great. yeah, it, it, it wasn't as, yeah, you know, and it'd be like, oh my god, no, finally. Just, can we just skip to that phase? <laughs> can it just be day one, please? 
Uh, hi, Rags and Morris. Not too long ago, hi. you mentioned time traveling dragons wouldn't work. Time traveling dragons no. wouldn't work. <laughs> In what scenario? Would, I was going to say, that doesn't sound like something we would say. I would need more information to say <laughs> if it would. To be fair, I consider it more likely for us to have said time travel doesn't work, not time traveling dragons don't work, but. Uh... Oh, yeah, I've completely ignored like the dragon part. I don't see what <laughs> it is about dragons, especially something that's so. Dragons can be anything immediate, essentially. But, um, yeah, I don't see why we would have said that. And they follow with saying, it, it must have movies, been some specific context. Reign of Fire, starring Christian Bale, Matthew McConaughey, great writing, visuals, thanks. So, my friend, that's not about time traveling dragons. That's about dragons that ruled the earth and then lumbered for, you know, thousands of years until we dug too deep and woke them up. That's not time travel. <laughs> yeah, did they do that's the, not a time traveling movie. Uh, but uh, I remember liking it a bunch. We could do that for E5 movies at some point. Yeah, it's a, it's a really yeah. cool little gem of a film that you wouldn't expect to have existed. And the um, but when it came out, the special effects of the dragons is pretty cool. A lot of practical stuff as well. An important consideration between the Flood and Necromorph is the protagonist. Isaac Clarke is a regular human. The Master Chief is a super soldier. The problem is that it's 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 a little bit complicated because like Chief's capacity to single-handedly stop the 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 flood kind of hinges on his access to equipment um and also the militaries of uh earth gov also could not stop the necromorphs well so i guess to put it into perspective the first flood outbreak you need to blow up the pillar of autumn so he needs a ship that he can blow up to stop them um, i'd also want to point out also, like if you've got the marker on top of necromorphs you're ship is fucked that's what i was just about to add exactly yeah. it's almost like you can't defeat the necromorph like master chief couldn't defeat the necromorphs because master chief just is a human he would fall prey to the influence of the marker true true Whereas it is with the flood, it's a matter of just not getting infected more so than yes. that's part of mind it's like whenever you make a dare i be insulting and call this like an archetype of zombies um don't mean to of course there's many variables involved but uh one of the problems you have and this is this is something that we will always bring up because i feel it's necessary is when you do your slow boys and all they can infect you with is their bite it's like i don't believe that we would have lost to these boys unless yeah, you give right. me another variable and so you have to give another variable and that's, that's what i'm saying like a lot of stuff will just be like there was there was a pandemic it killed 95 percent of humans and then reanimated them it's like okay that's yeah that's, it happens yeah. all at once the military well, the everything last, falls apart a lot of people yeah. got sick very quickly um yeah by, uh, uh, because i believe that in the lore of the last of us the um cordyceps was in food it was in right, a bunch of food a lot of people got infected very early and that's why necromorphs if if we were to understand it's one necromorph and then he has to kill you and then you become a necromorph it's like i don't know how well that's gonna spread um but when you add the marker and uh the nature of the yeah. different ranks it's like oh okay i get it i get it well yeah I now guess the same. one one yeah, aspect of dead space that i think is kind of like eh, pretty shaky is how one necromorph could take over the entirety of the military ship that shows up um because it's one necromorph that pops out of a military vessel. It was called like the, uh, I, I forget what it's called, but the um, uh, the the distress beacon that the Ishimura sent out was picked up by a military ship full of like soldiers with you know military stuff, and apparently one necromorph is able to ruin the entire ship. I don't buy that really. Um, so. It's hard to really say, but if you had, like, if the Ishimura was a, a massive military base, essentially, in space, it would be one of those, like, ah, I don't know yeah, if yeah, it I was can really say, do it. But it's the marker the details aspect. On that one. Yeah, it, it is the, because the, they, Isaac had to eject a necromorph that was inside of an escape pod when he's, when he's by the bridge. And hmm. that pod is picked up by the ship that is responding to the distress signal. They open it up, the necromorph jumps out, and apparently that kills everyone on the ship and they all get boo, 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 you know, scoop, boogified. And I'm just always been like, eh, it's, I don't know, I just... Yeah, eh, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah. 
but yeah, it's if you take away the marker aspect, then I think the flood definitely win. But the marker is pretty central to the whole. Necromorph I don't think you can thing. remove the marker from the necromorphs. Yeah, Seems if like it's just like zombie, up. if it's just space zombie fight versus space zombie fight, I think the necromorphs would win. Um, in terms of like one on one, some flood have whatnot, guns, don't they, or do they not? Yes, but well, floods can. Flood, yeah, flood. Like people who can have guns and then they can use guns. Yeah. Yes, they 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 have like rudimentary basic sort of knowledge of whoever they kind of infect. Well, mm -hmm. so th that would be a big thing to add is like we've seen that the flood can like fly ships. That's true. They, they yeah. can get around. Like the flood, the flood have a capacity to interact with technology. Um, and so when you add a grave mine into yeah. the mix, particularly, they could say, I want this ship to exactly. go to this specific place across the galaxy, well, we which is a huge Halo deal. Three. Um, yes, the flood crashed to Earth them, because yeah. they hijacked like a Covenant ship through slip space and then came to Earth, and yeah. that nearly destroyed everything. <coughs> I can't um, wait to see what they do to the flood in Halo show. <laughs> it's going to be awful. Do you think Dude, I, I guarantee you, you, if they involve that in the promotional stuff, it? people will go nuts and say, like, this is so They exciting. will go nuts, and they'll, they'll forget. They'll forget yep, they'll about forget. <laughs> And I bet you the grave mine will be a human. They won't be a It'll giant be a sexy crazy lady. alien. It will be Ooh, a sexy yeah, lady. It absolutely lady. will be. Like she Holy was shit. a sexy lady in, yeah. uh, the, yeah. Yeah. in the shadow of uh, war. <laughs> Why did you do that? Just have it be a spider. It would be, be really funny if uh, the fucking, I don't know, promo stuff for that comes out before this video is released. And then we're like, no, 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 I swear <laughs> we predicted this before. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Kerrigan is no. That's because Sarah Kerrigan was a human being. So don't even give me that shit. But they they might. That is if they even, even if they if they, if they pull reach out the flood right. before they get cancelled. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I'm almost wondering like, is the story that they want to tell? It's clearly about stupid human drama. With right. the flood, yeah. even, like they, they they're trying to do like a Who Am I for Chief? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, isn't isn't off the cards. It's just like cringe the way they're doing it. <laughs> can they add another faction that will have to be basically all CGI? I can see them doing it. I can see them fucking going nuts and just grabbing whatever they can. There's probably people talking right now at their HQ like, what the fuck are we doing for season two then? It's like, the flood? And they're like, I'd be people we like are the doing flood. the flood. And then season three will be the Prometheans because everybody, there's, there's some people who like the Prometheans. Not many, but some. <laughs> They'll leverage them for sure. If they get to the season where they can do that, but who knows? Um, when you move on to the Lego games you got on Steam, if you want to play in window mode, use a program called DXWND. The older games don't support it. I actually had to use that for a uh, Lego Indiana Jones. Um, annoying, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Cruella is a retelling of Hitler's life. Changed my mind. I think there are significant differences. Also, Hitler's parents probably weren't killed by Dalmatians, as far as I know. Or at least his mom. They were killed by Jews? Jewish Dalmatians. Yeah, that's that's what got it all started. One Punch Man is Superman depressed and bored. Kind of. Wow. I mean, I, mean, I if feel you like be that little... broad, I don't know. <laughs> but, sure. <laughs> um... Catching up from approximately two hours ago. Screw the reaction streamers. They won't learn unless you hit them in the in the pocketbook. Stop bleeding. Stop the bleeding now. I again, I would prefer not to uh, go to that length. It would it would have to, you know, like if if a reactor was just taking each of our three channel mainline videos and they put them on whenever they go out to have food with friends. They just play them in full, and uh, they re they don't show titles. They don't do any links. And you even have people in chat being like, whose channel is this? And when someone suggests who it is, the mods ban it. Um, Banned, yeah. So if that was happening and happened for a while, I think the three of us would be like, I don't know that we have any other choice. Like, At that point I would, yeah. Well, that's pretty extreme. Um, and I think that, again, we, we wouldn't need to do that because we would just point it out as happening, and I think it would get some traction. People would be like, wow, that's fucking terrible. And it's like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Springy State Review, Wyoming. Um, Wyoming is Yellowstone's in Wyoming, right? Is that your review? I, I'm just asking. Yellowstone is in Wyoming, isn't it? So that's, that's neat. Otherwise, I don't know anything 
about Wyoming. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, it's it's uh it's in no it's on uh well, it's yes. in it's in Wyoming. It's in Wyoming and Montana, right? It kinda goes a little bit into Montana. Maybe, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This is a... I'm not sure what we're gonna do with this one, because I don't remember anymore, but it says, Name ten things wrong with the Tomorrow War. Oh, God. <laughs> um, time travel mechanics don't make sense. Wrong. That's one. So, yeah. time travel number one, the military strategies, and I'm gonna break this down in multiple levels. Number one, sending people into the future uh, who have no military training and giving them a week. Absurd. That's gonna be two. Number three... Um, the people in the future somehow even being able to be beaten by these enemies, despite having access to air superiority, a whole bunch of military equipment. Um, the final battle sequence doesn't make sense on multiple levels. They get the cure back, nobody wants to listen to them, to, like, use it. No government is interested for some reason. Um, the fact that that's the not fact even that pivotal they, to the victory. It doesn't even mean anything, they just blow it up anyway. Yeah. So, like, in the military... And the military, upon learning the source of the uh, thing that is going to destroy the world, they will not lend any support whatsoever to yep. going to find out where it is before it happens. Yeah. There is the I mean, yeah the small arms don't make any sense based on the foe that you're fighting. I have no idea why you have short little carbines like that. Oh, right, when a, they were trying to extract the queen, that whole sequence was pretty dumb. Yeah, with the um, chains and weird shit, when they oh, should just... Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, we could keep going, but I think that at that point we've already sort of highlighted several things wrong with that film. They'll get an EFAP movies on it one day that can... Uh... Yeah. Oh, they we did really an EFAP will. on it, so... We yeah, did an EFAP did. on it, yeah. Awful movie. Yeah. As someone who's been to SF many times and grew up in the Bay Area, I can assure you, Fringy, it's very dirty outside of tourist traps and the rich areas. I'm not sure why that would have come up. I guess it would be that uh, about San Francisco as being like a nice place to visit or live in. I think yeah, um, I, I think what interesting to me is when you look at an image of because a lot of people think San Francisco is like the stuff that you see in movies, you know, like all of those tight sort of like houses and the narrow streets and the hills. Most of San Francisco is suburbs, just like everywhere else in America, <laughs> like. So, like, whatever it is that you imagine as being it, it's like, you're paying a lot more for something that you could find everywhere in America, to some extent. Um, yeah. San Francisco is expensive. But as for how clean it is, I couldn't say. Never been there. Um, hey, I was just wanted to... lot of cities, though, isn't it? Like, the, the touristy areas are the parts that are well-maintained, but elsewhere it's a different story. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, I was just wanted to say that I loved your video breaking down the sexual misconduct charges against Angry Joe. Good. Well, I mean, if you helped out in any way, shape, or form with any craziness related to stuff like that, then good stuff. I don't think Absolutely. I saw that video. Uh, what is the future of Batwoman when there is no more Jacob? Uh, it, it's not as good. Say that much. He yeah, was, and uh, they get rid of him so terribly, too. Yeah. It's basically suffering in prison in a very unfair way that just, uh, I hate it. It was very sad to watch. We miss him. Um, Mola, thoughts on Reign of Fire? Hey, someone else is asking. Hey! Uh, it's the real neat movie that you watch it today and be like, how did this even exist? And it's like, because once upon a time they used to fun things that weren't, you know, franchises, sequels, and give them a bunch of money and have people star in them. The movie's about, um, in like, contemporary, I think 2000, the year 2000, something like that, uh, the, the uh, several points all over Earth, a, um, oh, actually, I think it's in England, um, a mining operation wakes up an ancient dragon, and then that dragon wakes up all dragons across Earth, they all break out and they annihilate humans, basically. Um, and we're talking like there are thousands of these things, um, and they live. I think that the way that it works is like they need things to burn to to live. It's kind of strange their biology. Um, but the idea is, of course, that they they go back to sleep once everything's burnt until everything's ready to be burnt again. Um, and we follow Christian Bale 
who's like a survivor in his old castle with his people and civilization, and uh, Matthew McConaughey's like a warhawk type who's trying to figure out how to destroy the dragons forever, and they clash. Um, it, it, I remember it being a fun movie. I can't say how well written it is. Yeah, maybe we'll find out one day. More, uh, oh, just jumped onto Heal vs. Baby Gate. Hi, Rags. Hi. Alright. Hello, Longman and friends. Hope you're all having a great day. Do any of you enjoy cooking? And if so, what are you best at making at? Um, I don't hate it. I don't mind cooking at all. Sorry, make, I don't have make. a lot of skill. What I make is pretty, um... Is pretty is pretty simple stuff, like just grilling vegetables and cooking meat, stuff like that. Nothing, you know, nothing particularly impressive. Yep, I was saying, but it tastes basic good. Stuff. Yeah, I I don't know how to do anything special with cooking. Likewise. Um, as for what are you best at making? I'd be like, I, I don't know. I I've never thought of myself as being really good at making a particular thing. Uh, I like cooking pork. Like, I don't know, this seems to be the one So much for like. the pig lover. Oof. I do like pigs, but I also pigs like the meat that is within them. <laughs> so. It's just another thing about pigs that I like, is their taste. What can I say? Yeah, they're a very, as Homer would say, a magical creature. A wonderful, magical animal. <laughs> And what is everyone's favorite food? My recipe book must grow. Hmm. Oh. Favorite food? Oh man, I don't know. I love seafood and just animals. <laughs> My stock answer is pizza. <laughs> pizza's, a, pizza's a good stock answer. Pizza's I good. I really like um, honey chicken. I've always really liked honey chicken. Like lobster and like good seared scallops or just I think I'm always going to appeal to like a steak. base food, like a... Yeah, salmon or uh, just chicken. <laughs> I don't know, it's hard to hide. I'm easy to please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. Um, Hollow Knight is also a fungus zombie game. Uh, I guess in a sense you could say that. A little bit. Springy, when Max and Chad inviting you on cold ones, don't you live right next door in that one town in Australia? I, is that a podcast, I'm guessing? Yeah. Um, and they're both Australian, yeah. Well, it's an Australian podcast. Oh, yeah, I see. Right. I'm sure you'll be on there one day. Hmm. Um, have you guys finished Loki? Morley, you said last episode of WandaVision is the worst MCU content. Is is Loki worse than WandaVision? Loki's last episode yes. makes zero sense. Uh, <laughs> Loki's the show makes no sense. That's just what an outdated super chat, you know? It's like, yeah. yes, Loki is worse than WandaVision, but it doesn't stop there. So are other things. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, to try and develop Loki's morals, they did it at the expense of what makes Loki great. Good example is Harleen and DC's Injustice. That's how to do it. They just speed ran it, because they didn't care. Yeah, they, got, they wanted to get that shit over fast. And you could tell. Yep. Um, you get to replay Soma for the first time, but you get told it's not a horror game by Joseph Anderson first. Thoughts? <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, this game was insanely good. Why did you lie to me? So, yeah, I would just conclude he's a liar pretty quickly. Um, when you go, well, Spring hasn't played it yet, so. <laughs> There's, let's just say there are sequences in that game uh, where my fear factor was getting cranked pretty hardcore because I, I treated <laughs> the game... Do you know what I mean when I say this, right? Like, treated the game with respect in that I yes. understood what it wanted and I was going to engage with it on that level instead of... Because, like, we don't typically do that with, let's say, Book of Boba Fett. We don't engage with it at the level that the creators would like us to. We're, we're going in like, this is going to be funny. Yeah. Um, no, I, I get you. But, you know, Somar, I took it incredibly seriously and it was an incredibly rewarding experience and there's no fucking way I would have concluded. So, like, oh, what what genre is it? Action adventure? I'd be like, yeah, totally. It's, it's not it's not horror at all. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know how a, a video game, like, reviewer could possibly say it isn't horror. Like, it baffles me. Well, if it, if it doesn't scare you, it's not horror. In the same oh, way that God. if a story doesn't thrill you, it's not a thriller. Uh, if a story doesn't make you laugh, it's not a comedy. Not a comedy, comedy yeah. It's, 
What do, if it makes you feel nothing? What is it? <laughs> like, what if if you feel no dramatic tension? Then there's it's not a drama. It becomes a um, genreless. Uh, what if a stupid you feel metric! That it's not animated. It's not animated. I'm <laughs> willing to agree <laughs> that there is an arbitrary nature to to genre, of course. But at the same time, like oh, like, this come on. <laughs> yeah, like w w you can't you can't just be like it's only it's the eye of the beholder shit. Like really. Nah. Just because something nah. isn't funny to you does not mean it's not a comedy now. It's the same thing as art when people are like, this is so bad, it's not art. And it's like, no, that's, you know, it is art, it's just shit. Uh, yeah, that, that's another thing, by the way. I wouldn't, it wouldn't matter if, if I went into, like, if you guys recommended Soma for ages, but simultaneously said uh, it's not a horror game, it would be fine. And then I'd play it and be like, I don't know, I think it's a horror game. Like, it, me knowing it's horror when going in doesn't uh, <coughs> make it better or worse. Especially because generally those games will tell you pretty darn quick if they're horror or not. Yeah, uh, I can't remember if they do it with Soma. I think they might, but with Dark Descent they're like, please turn all of your lights off, please, you know, balance your yeah. sounds accordingly, please, please treat this experience with some level of, like, engagement. Like, don't be in a fucking call with your friends sort of thing. And it's like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Thank you for telling me. If you, if you, if you, all right, I'll, I'll do what you're telling me to do. All right. All right. Give it to me. Hey guys, The Last Jedi was the first and only movie that's left me in the theater and emotionally numb and as empty as the end credits rolled. Okay. Uh, what movies have done this to you? High rags also. Hello. Hmm, emotionally numb. So you said emotionally roll. numb? I usually get angry with films if I really hate them. I'm trying to think emotionally numb when the credits roll. And what I mean is I usually get angry with the ones I don't like. Obviously, I'm happy with the ones I do like. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know that I ever feel numb. numb. Like, you'd say, like, completely apathetic emotionally? Like, I just don't feel anything? Like, I'm numb? I guess? Uh, probably tons of stuff leave me emotionally numb, especially if I could tell the movie's trying, it wants me to feel a certain way, but I'm just like, no, I just don't feel it. Especially when I know what it is trying to make me feel specifically. Like, I know what you're doing here. This is transparent. I, I just, I know what you're trying to get me to do, and it's just not working. But, um, most of the time I'm feeling something of some kind, so... I haven't got any answers for this one. Even The Last Jedi. It was a weird feeling, but it wasn't numb. I don't, yeah. It's not a common feeling, I would say. Always when I'm working. Hi, Rags. Hi. Morley, you're gay. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. I see you guys streaming at lunchtime, and you're all still at it eight hours later. These are the masters of long. <laughs> we are we are lasters of long. Hey Molly, you can block bots by adding certain keywords to your blacklist. Helps for chat bots. Hi Rags. Hi. Those are recent ones though. They keep changing everything about their naming and what they say, but they're unified in their annoyance. Yes. Um. But yeah. And uh, that does it for uh, for this section of the super chat catch up. Woo! I forget what number of the episode it was on, but it'll be probably labeled when you're listening to this so thank you all very much for listening we'll see absolutely you. thanks for stopping by we've wrapped up our our, our tiger bear art yes we'll yeah. see you in the next one everybody bye, -bye. goodbye